Hello everyone, hi, how are you all doing? My name is Ishma, and with me I have the ever slimed. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that's what we're going with now. Hi, my name is uh, Tainted Tolly, uh, apparently also <laughs> now known as Slime Girl after getting slimed <laughs> on No Milestone, Just Madness today. Yes, absolutely. Um, before we get into the swing of things here, there is currently still a bit war going on between which of the outfits we're going to wear for the run. So we're just talking a little bit to give you guys the chance of getting more donations in for that. And uh, yeah, as we already said, this is going to be the last run of, well, the first weekend, I want to say, of ESA Winter 2024. So, you know, we got our blankets yes. uh, coming here. We are getting all uh, comfy. Getting it's going to be under the blanket comfy well. horror story time for the end of the day and um, it's gonna be yeah, a very cozy run so you know grab a glass of tea hot cocoa with some marshmallows or whatever it is you need to feel comfy on a blanket and just sit back and relax and uh, I guess Dino can tell us which outfit we are gonna wear for the run I certainly can. Let me just see if I can log into the tablet and find out. <laughs> <for> <laughs> <you>. <laughs> <Let it down. laughs> so you have like another minute or so to yeah, get your you donations in for that. I'm certainly a fan of the gold. The hazmat is a little bit on the green side. Yeah, uh, it has a little bit of that goo color maybe going on <laughs> that you had in your hair. This color. is slightly brighter, but yeah, slightly brighter. It's okay. very similar. Right. Very yeah. similar. All right, all right. There you go. Uh, like green seems to be the theme. <laughs> 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 theme of the event. <laughs> but winter is the green event now. So let's see, maybe Hasmat was, uh, was the outfit that won. Yeah, I am trying to find it at the moment. I'm I mean, it. Snake, it snake skin is another color, shade of green in a way, I guess. Is it? I don't... I mean, it's a snake skin, you know. Snake skin is kind of green, I would say. Yeah, no, no I, I do see the green uh, in the chest plate, you're right. It's, it's very shiny. Yep. Very shiny green. It kind of reminds me a bit of Snake Man from Mega Man 3, if anybody knows that. And if you do, you're old. I'm sorry. <laughs> <That's> I heard <laughs> groans from audience. <laughs> you call people out like that. I mean, uh, we have another one coming up for that, potentially. Okay, I actually can't find this at the moment. Bear with me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> then I will just wear whatever the hell I want. <laughs> Maybe it is the very green one. I, I don't Can think you I've swap it after you start? I, I have to play the sound of God for a, uh, for a minute. Uh, apparently, that reward was not taken by anyone. Oh, so I we can just wear so whatever I want. You, you can wear whatever you want. Oh. All right, runners. Oh, all right, all right, all right runners. Green. Okay, what, what are you guys, what, what are you in favor of? Oh, let's have a look. For, for, which, for which outfit? What are, what are we wearing? What are we feeling like? I mean... I mean, I'm a personal love of the gold, you know. Ma uh, make, make it a PB, make it I a do love gold. gold run. I do love gold. All right, gold. Okay, e everybody's good for gold? Yeah, Chad, good for gold? Audience Chad, cheer gold? for gold? gold? Okay, yeah? gold it is, whatever. All right. Let's do this. Um, first thing to know is, if I can actually, well, load, there's load game. <laughs> uh, this speed run starts off a little bit strange, as in, I think, because um, the beginning of the game is very slow. Um, which, you know, it's basically what you know from AAA gaming nowadays, right? You start the game, you get overloaded with tutorials and story setup and whatever it is, and it is slow as... And, um... It's in a speedrun setting, it's just very boring to have just have to repeat the first five to eight minutes over and over again and just go through that tutorial. So what the speedrun community for this game actually decided upon is you know what, we're just gonna skip all that. You know, we're making our all rules anyway, so we're gonna load from a save that what puts us there? into the second chapter of the game. And once I get control of the character, you know, this is like five to 10 minutes into the game in a speedrun setting, the timer will start. So in three, two, one, here we go. Oh my God. And uh, yeah, oh my God, exactly. I mean, lo look at this, like, uh, everything is on fire. We are trying to escape the Black Iron Prison now because the thing that you've, uh, not seen so far is basically the story setup is we are a contracted freight uh, pilot who is you know putting freight from this uh, from Callisto you know the planet or the moon around Jupiter called Callisto to another moon called Europa and uh, his ship gets boarded by a terrorist group and subsequently it crash lands back on Callisto but instead of getting uh, helped you know out of his shipwreck no, he gets just thrown into prison, which is just lovely. I mean, he basically did nothing wrong, right? He just crash landed back on that planet and uh, you're in prison. Great. He just got really unlucky. He really is. It's not his day. It's definitely not his day. You know, it's basically Monday for us <laughs> also. You know, that's not how you want to start your week, I don't think. 
the ultimate Monday. <laughs> this is definitely the ultimate Monday, yes. I'm sorry for all of you guys, you know, in a time zone where it is already Monday and it's not just cozy Sunday evening, but um, I guess we get through this together, right? Uh, anyway, uh, we get thrown into prison and uh, we wake up and uh, yeah, everything is on fire. The inmates are running rampant. And they're also not of the very, well, I want to say human kind anymore. Also, a uh, bit of a warning here, this game is uh, kind of extreme in its score and stuff. So if you're a little bit squeamish, uh, you might actually just close your eyes and pretend we're playing, I don't know, Pokemon or something <laughs> more <laughs> colorful. Um, so nice little farming yeah. sim. That could also work. <laughs> Uh, because, I mean, those of you who know the game might also know that this is actually from the original developers of the Dead Space series. You know, basically a lot of people that worked on Dead Space 1 and 2 also worked on this game. And uh, it's a bit of a double-edged sword in that regard, I suppose, because, you know, a lot of um, the people that are, were interested in the game thought, you know, this is going to be the next Dead Space anyway. And it kind of is, but it also kind of isn't. And uh, I think for a lot of uh, players, like, um, uh, yeah, their expectations weren't really fulfilled in a way. Personally, I can definitely see some problems with it as well, but I just enjoy the game for what it is, and I think that is basically the best you can make out of that. Also, full because disclaimer, I don't actually run this game or have even played it. <laughs> I've only watched you play this. Yeah, but, you know, it's, it's but it just, cool. It's just fun to watch. It looks really good. Like, uh, I guess there is absolutely no question about it, about the graphical fidelity uh, on display here. It's uh, just the main issue that I personally have with is, you know, it's very melee focused. Instead of, you know, Dead Space or a lot of other horror games, you're more like uh, a little bit back away from um, your enemies and if you ever get into melee contact with them, well, there's definitely something gone wrong there. And instead in this game you are really seeking out the melee combat and it is very visceral, it's kind of satisfying to do, not gonna lie, you know, if you've had a bad day, like a Monday or something, you can just beat the ever-living out of uh, stuff here. So it's kind of satisfying in that regard. Yeah, but, um, in terms of viewer, the dodge yeah. mechanic looks pretty cool. Yeah. It totally does. But, uh, you know, if you're just constantly going up into the face of an enemy that you're trying to avoid, it kind of takes a little bit away from the horror factor in my respect. But anyway, we're getting a bit distracted by the conversation around the game. Let's actually just talk about what's happening here. Uh, we just got our first weapon, which is, uh, you know, this hammer kind of looking thing with a spike at the end that we got on our back. And we briefly touched upon the melee fighting mechanics. And as you can probably already tell, Doing the melee fighting is actually really slow in this game. Again, pretty satisfying to do because the hits all feel very meaty and the sound design is just on point, but it all takes a lot of time to get through. And, you know, it's a game full of enemies and obviously we are not going to go ahead and fight every single enemy what? that will... Yeah, come on, hey, I mean, we already passed what? this guy by that just Something climbed up the from the uh, railing there. And yeah, that will be like a running theme. We're trying to obviously circumvent as much of the combat as possible. Uh, we can't do a lot of that in the first chapter yet, but we, you know, we're speedrunners. We have some ways um, around all that. Uh, another character that we met in a cutscene that you might have seen him a little bit uh, in the beginning, but obviously you know, we, c we can't skip the cutscenes, so we will, uh, is Elias. Elias is another prisoner in well, Black Iron Prison here. And he's been here for a couple of years already, maybe even decades. Um, not exactly sure he ever elaborates how long exactly he has been here. But uh, basically, you know, he knows the prison inside and out. He knows how to get out of this. He was just, you know, waiting for his moment to strike, so to speak, to escape. And uh, he's at the moment locked in his cell. And Jacob, as the newbie in the prison, basically doesn't know anything about it. You know, he's just arrived. And so they kind of strike a pact that Jacob will get him out because his cell had been unlocked. And uh, Elias, in turn, will help him escape the prison. So that is kind of what we're doing at the moment. We're trying to get to a control station in this prison to basically unlock the rest of the prison cells. And, um, yeah, set the like you said, Elias knows the prison well, but he wouldn't really have anywhere to go afterwards. Whereas yes. Jacob happens to crash land here and he's a pilot. Exactly. So by teaming up, they can, you know, have Elias get them out of prison, and then once they're out, uh, Jacob, who's the main character, can find them a ship, and then they can actually escape together. Exactly. 
And totally, that's the way it's going to go, right? Nothing Absolutely. Go I mean, nothing is ever going to go wrong in this game. Have you guys ever played like a horror game where things have gone wrong? Nah. You know, we've all been through these scenarios a couple hundred times maybe already. So we, we know what to do. Exactly. You know, not, nothing is going to go wrong. And it's going to be great. Absolutely. I mean, we're just in this elevator, Elias. Keep it calm. Keep calm. You know, we're, we're, we're on it. We're on it. We're on it. Um, so yeah, loading times. Elias. Elevator. Thumbnail. Elevator music. Heading up now. Good. Maybe it's for the best that there's no the elevator music. <laughs> I mean, what would the elevator music in this prison be? That is a good question. You'll need to watch out though. Hmm. Security unit. Chad, let us know what it would be an elevator music in a prison <laughs> sound like. I'd be very interested to hear some sound picks here. Uh, in the meantime, we will meet the first of the security Black bots. Security because, you know, we, this is a sci-fi story, if you haven't picked up on that. So, obviously, we're going to have uh, robot guards and not just, you know, human guards anymore, even though there are still, obviously, a couple of human guards around. So, we actually have to sneak our way around this bot because he will instantly kill us if he spots us and actually manages to shoot us. So, we sneak by him by running around him. And he will then very slowly follow us, so we can just uh, run down the main character, and he will actually never catch us. So, um, you know, this whole seeking section, we can just bypass it. And uh, we are coming up on one of the most important techniques for the speedrun, which is the fuse duping. It's actually a little bit of a misnomer. We're not going to dupe this fuse. We are just instead... Um, well, making use of the animation of it, because in some rooms of this game, you know, you have these fuses with which you can open the gates, as you can see here. Uh, however, for some of the gates, you are allowed to take the fuse back out again, because the game kind of expects you to uh, do puzzles with them. <laughs> however, if you just... <laughs> My God. <laughs> yes, there is a lot of fire here. <laughs> Good timing on that one. <laughs> um... If you just repeatedly insert and then retract the fuse, you can make it so that the animations are so misaligned that at some point you can just take out the fuse and when you retract it, you are fast enough to then still walk through the door because it hasn't closed yet, basically allowing you to take that fuse with you into parts of the game where you're not supposed to have a fuse just yet. And uh, again, it's called fuse duplication. It's not really a duplication because, you know, the fuse doesn't get really duplicated. You're just taking it out of its supposed environment, basically. Also and talking we will about elevator music, I just want to mention, I saw someone in chat and they said that it's going to be, I want to break free. <laughs> Which I think would be a great elevator music for a prison, so, yeah. yeah. But I, I think it would also send, like, the wrong <laughs> message to the inmates from the guards. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure like, they do all want to break free, so I mean, pretty accurate. Yeah, but, you know, actually encouraging them <laughs> to do that, I mean, all right. I can roll with it, but, um, <laughs> no, okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> we will see. Um, anyway, we actually got our proper, oh, wait, I, I forget to. The time you skip a cutscene, but he still hasn't, you know, opened the door. Like, what is with that? Just do it in the cutscene, boy. Is he talking about it? Uh, apparently. Um, so we actually picked up the proper melee weapon for the game, which is the stun baton that you got from one of the dead guards here. And you know, that was basically the melee weapon you will use for the whole of the game. That you can still upgrade. You know, you can get more damage and stuff like that, which we're not going to do. And there is a very important sound coming up here, so I'll we'll just... Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, it's here. Wait up. Are you not hearing this speed around? Oh. Apparently not. Oh, that makes me sad. <sighs> we were actually waiting <laughs> for that. We were looking at the footage again because it well, wasn't I this was, one. It was because I was asking you, because when I watched him play this game casually, he was just, you know, running around, fighting the inmates and, like, being lost. And I was like... That, that, that's a dial-up sound. Did you hear that? And he was like, no, this is no dial-up sound. I was like, no, no, no. I promise you it's the dial-up sound. And we went back and checked. Uh, and yeah, it's the dial-up sound that plays uh, in a segment there. Uh, but I guess we're slightly too fast for it in the speedrun, which makes me sad. I want Speaking of slightly too fast, I was a little bit slightly too fast <laughs> and didn't uh, actually trick out these enemies here, which is why we have to now to fight them. You might have seen it. I wanted to try and use that elevator back there. But if there are enemies nearby you, you actually cannot interact with, uh, you know, the interactables. 
in the environment. So what you're actually supposed to do there, before I vaulted over those boxes, I was supposed to wait until the enemy does the same, so he's on the other side and actually cannot catch up to me. You're but since I was just too fast, you know, suffering from success here, <laughs> um, yeah, they caught up to me and I actually had to go and fight them. And you could see how long that actually takes. A little bit of a mistake on my part, but hey, we're still in the run here. And that is going to be the end of the first, well, technically the second chapter actually in the game, but the first chapter in the speedrun, because again, we skipped the complete, uh, co or completely skipped the first chapter of the game in the speedrun, because it just a failed. I'm curious, do we have details on who, who shared the, the fire sound with us when we ran through the fire? Uh, yes. I mean, that was probably from Das Faro, from Legends, back then. If you haven't watched any of ESA Legends, um, you know, wait until I'm done with this run and then go ahead and do so <laughs> while we do the reruns or something. Uh, because ESA Legends was a legend in itself, I want to say. So many good runs during that event. It was a very cozy get-together of phenomenal RPG speedrunners that were just having a jolly old good time. And I guess Mitako was also there. Uh, <laughs> I can jump in with a donation if we're Go ahead. Uh, we've got a donation from Dorian Snowball. Uh, yeah, Dorian. <laughs> with the comment of, got my blanket with me for a cozy horror stream. Good luck, oh. on the run. Thank you. And that goes towards the Open Taku bonus chart super emulator target. Thank you for your donation, Dorian. Um, and that puts us less than $250 away from hitting the 16,000. Can we do it by the end of this run? Can we do it by the end of today? Because, you know, after this, we're, we're going to go to sleep, so... Yes. Make it happen. I mean, it's a horror game. Maybe it will keep up the one or another watching, but... You know, if, you, if you're up longer, you have more time to donate to a very good cause. So, uh, maybe it's UGC worth it? Printing. Should be worth it? Have I think it's worth it. Day. I agree. Yes. Um, so this is the Reforge Station. This is basically your one-stop shop for everything in the game, be it you know, munition that you need or upgrades or whatnot. Uh, we're actually gonna forge the hand cannon here, which is basically the pistol. But it's, a, it's more like a magnum, actually. It has quite the kick to it. It deals a lot of damage. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> yes. It will definitely fire. And uh, I think these guys need a room or something. It was like very intimate. Hmm. Yeah, well, he ran away to grab I mean, room, so. can, can love bloom on the battlefield. Shadow let us now. Oh, he actually oh, he turned through. me around. All right, all right. I see how it is. And he's down. Okay. So this was one of the enemies uh, that you have to kill because otherwise you cannot interact with this elevator over here. And Jacob, please hurry up just a little bit, you know, a little bit of time to please and thank you. Take that elevator down to the next level. And um, yeah, well, we actually managed to meet up with Elias now, but uh, you know, since Elias knows all the security systems and security systems are breaking down all around us because you know the prism is in a bit of a bad state. He's just staying behind in the control room and opening the doors for us and whatnot. I mean, it doesn't look like this all the time? I, I mean, I've never been there. <laughs> I have no plan on ever being there, so maybe, but my god, don't they have like a janitor? Yeah. I, I think they really need a bit uh, of an arty touch or something. Yeah, I think maybe. Yeah, Jacob arrived at a, at a bad time. Yeah. Maybe it's like a janitor strike. Maybe they're trying to unionize or something and the... Um, Prison wards, uh, warden is against them. <laughs> I don't know. We, we literally just woke up. We have no idea what's going on here. It's just these murderous creature things going around and you know hitting the guards and whatnot. So again, we are trying to not fight these guys. Uh, the way the melee combat basically works is uh, you're supposed to you know dodge these attacks. You are supposed to always alternate your dodges between left and right. So if you dodge twice in the same direction, uh, that actually will not count as a dodge and the enemy will hit you. And that kind of goes into how you approach the speedruns when you're trying to get past these enemies. Uh, because you actually kind of have to anticipate how often is an enemy going to attack you so you can coordinate your dodges accordingly. Let's say, you know, you want to pass by an enemy and if you think they're going to attack, uh, they're going to attack you twice, you want to dodge right first and then maybe left to try and go around his left side. Because if you were to dodge left first and then right, it would put you back uh, on the path you're trying to go a little bit and then you would lose time. 
However, sometimes these enemies still will hit you from behind, which is why Jacob will sometimes just, you know, tumble around a little bit. Or they will actually grab you and just completely turn you around, and that loses obviously even more time. So there's quite a bit of RNG when it comes to just trying to walk by an enemy, because, you know, again, the game is very melee focused, and uh, they try to sell it. Yeah, and like what you saw in the previous room as well, yeah, we talking go. about the enemy, uh, you saw that uh, Jacob Ooh. stuck basically a knife into this dead guard, trying to pull something out of his mm. neck. Uh, it's the same thing you see Jacob wearing as well. Everyone in the prison has that thing, and it's, I guess, attached to the nervous system or yes. something. So you can see, you know, basically functions as a health bar, but it's also some form of a memory unit. So you mm. can pick those up from the dead enemies to gain information that they had, or in this case, access to a door that the guard had access to, but you don't have access to as a prisoner. It's called the core system, and it's That's basically, it no, they're, they're MacGuffin on how the, oh my god, this completely confused me. <laughs> uh, they're MacGuffin on how the technology uh, in the prison works, basically, yeah. Like Tally said, your ID uh, identification system basically on how you can get around the prison. Uh, the system scan you in and allow you through doors and so on. So it's basically, you know, the evolution of the rig system that you see in the Bat mm -hmm. uh, Dead Space series, where they had that thing down their spine, and obviously you know, they, they couldn't just go ahead and copy whatever they did in Dead Space, but it was, you know, oh my god, I hate it when he follows me into you and it just turns me on, you have to go buy him again. That was like, you know, the RNG that I was talking about earlier, where you're, ah, he oh, is not, very huggy tonight, my god. I mean, hugs! <laughs> He's just so, you know, hyped that he's at ESA, just want to go around and hug all the people, but it's only like me, and I kind of don't like it, so <laughs> please respect my boundaries. Um, but yeah, now we have picked up the most important thing in the run, which is the grip system, where we can... Uh, can you please... Tutorial. No. Hello? <laughs> Okay. There's um, yeah, a tutorial, you know, you have this dramatic slowdown when the guy comes through the door telling you to, hey, use the grip system to, like, grab him and throw him. And if you are just too fast, again, suffering from success here, uh, to grab with the grip system, you get this, uh, you know, slowdown while you already have him in your grip. But because uh, the tutorial isn't completely uh, completed, because the game doesn't expect you to have already gripped that guy, it is still in the slow-mo, and he's just sitting there like, Come on, man. Let me go. Oh, God. And, uh, yeah, just... Uh, lovely room you're in right now. Absolutely. Like I said, you know, if you're a little bit of the squeamish type, grab mm, a blanket and just put it over your head for <laughs> the next one. Oh, that's what the blankets are for. <laughs> See? Maybe. Okay. It all makes sense now. But, yeah, Dino, if you have anything you want to throw over to us, go ahead. What the hell? I do have a donation. I've just got to open the tablet again so I can read it out for you. being an absolute menace over here. The yep. tech is like, I want to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, the, even the tablet wants to go to bed at this it's, point. It's, it's just so comfy, it literally <laughs> fell asleep. <laughs> exactly. Um, so we have two donations. We have one from Zero Kieran with no comment of $10. So thank you very much for your donation. And we have $10 from Mataka <laughs> <laughs> with the comment, your check is in the mail, Aishma. <laughs> <laughs> Just like we rehearsed. <laughs> <laughs> and that is going towards the Open Taiku bonus chart super emulator. Totally not taking advantage of that in the next milestone, or n no milestone, just madness uh, segment. You heard it here first, he's taking advantage of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, the grip system. It basically allows us what the name might suggest. You can just pick up an enemy and uh, throw them around for a little bit. And this might be the worst fight uh, in the game because uh, the grip system that we have is very, oh, hey, thank you. Very limited in energy. You see that the, where is the last one? I, I can hear, oh, up there. Okay. I can hear, I can see him. But uh, you have very little energy in the beginning and actually grabbing an enemy drains the energy of the grip system extremely fast. Again, you can see this little blue bar that's blinking uh, atop the health indicator, uh, Jacob's next. Oh, there it is. And we kind of do another few strips here. I think about three should be good. Ah, no. This is like one of the hardest fuse duplications to do because the door is actually off screen, so you kind of just have to time it out. Let's see when you got a dance. Right with two. Oh, that was too fast again. <laughs> Professional speedrunner over here, everybody. Okay, so maybe it was three. 
That door what is the not hell? It is today. absolutely not cooperating. Okay. Let's do this. There, there we, we go. go. I think the problem that I have with this door is actually you have to, w if you just mash the button to insert and extract the fuse as fast as possible, um, you're basically off cycle in a way, and you have to, you know, stagger it a little bit with your presses, and that was just, you know, trying to go too fast here. Again, suffering from success. It's just what it is. And uh, yeah, like the grip will reach, or the blue energy bar, the grip bar, the, uh, will recharge automatically on its own That's after a while. However, in a speedrun setting, it just takes way too Life. long for that to actually go into effect. So instead, what we do in the run, because the grip is very important right, from this sure. point onward throughout the rest of the game, we will do uh, tactical uh, checkpoint reloads. Because whenever you reload a checkpoint, it completely um, refills your energy bar. It doesn't refill your health, but it does refill your energy. And uh, we routed it out in a way that um, either before a big fight or after a big fight, we have a checkpoint reload that also helps us in a different way, either because the checkpoint was actually a little bit further in the corridor that we're running around, so we're actually gaining a little bit of movement, so to speak, uh, and save a little bit of more time or other things where we, you know, stop a longish animation that saves us even a little bit more time here. So you know, it's, it's the little optimizations that you just do throughout this. Um, here we're actually starting something so we have enough money to get an upgrade for the grip energy. So now I have a little bit more energy with my grip and I can, you know, grip stuff for longer. Um, also, keep in mind, I am playing the PlayStation 5 version of the game. Um, it's a little bit easier playing this on PC, simply because, you know, if you have a keyboard and a mouse, and obviously with a mouse, you can just crank up the sensitivity, and whenever you grab onto an enemy, you can just, you know, grab it and just immediately fling it somewhere to the side, whereas with a stick, it takes a little bit longer to do so, which is why all of these things are a little bit harder to do. And here we're just going to grab these guys and drop them no. in the pit, and they are gone. Bye bye. This is peak combat gameplay. Yeah. I mean, that is basically what we're trying to do for the rest of the run now to make the enemy encounters that we have to do go by faster. Right. And this is where the two uh, fuses that we do to come in because yeah. normally you're supposed to go ahead and grab them over there from these uh, green indicators and then insert them up here. However, we already have two fuses with us because we duped them earlier, you know, quote unquote, duped. So we're just going to go ahead, insert here, that will, you know, power up the whole room. And then we'll just go ahead to the other side. And grab the other two fuses, and then we, and it, once again, have two fuses in our inventory that we can use later on in the game. So this is like a forced combat segment where you uh, just go ahead and kill all these enemies off until, you know, the actual door here cycles open. And uh, you can kind of see how this will go. We'll just grab these guys and just boop. Oh no. And he's dead. Again, I don't want to hold on to these guys too long because it will drain my energy very quickly. So I will just try and grab them and just immediately throw them away again, hopefully into these um, very unpleasant... Uh, I mean, this is just a safety hazard yeah, waiting to I happen. I was going to say, like, who designed this roof? Because this is... Dude. This is not OSHA compliant, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I mean, if it is, uh, no. no. But then again, maybe no. OSHA doesn't no. really apply to Callisto protocol. I don't know. I mean, on the one hand, you know, it's a prison and they're doing shady things here anyway. So I guess this isn't really up maybe to OSHA's regulation standards. But my God, like what the hell, people? I think you should have enough money to make this a little bit more safe. Because not everybody here is... Oh my God, I just... I'm just not getting this. There we go. Yeah, someone in chat pointed out that the, there, there, there are those spinny things in fun houses as well, but they usually come with less spikes. Yeah. These ones have a bit too much spike, I feel like, to go in a Also, uh, just pointing it out, if I walk into these things, I will die. Yes, it's an insta-kill. Not just for the enemies, but also for you. Yes. There is no discrimination from the spikes. Oh god, hello. Okay, that should have been the last guy, so we'll just go ahead and grab these fuses now, yes. You can hear the thing cycling down. And I'm gonna be a little bit safe and actually grab the health injector here as well. Also, I just noticed we, we hit one milestone here. We have 16,000 total rice for Make-A-Wish. Woo! 
I was just going to jump in and say that because we had a massive $200 donation Woo! from username Niels saying, well, I heard good things about French and Latin Spanish Tears of the Kingdom. Let's go with French. So he's claiming the <laughs> French for the Tears of the Kingdom run. Um, also, I'm just going to snipe that $16,000 goal. So thank you very much, username Niels. And also putting that towards the bonus chart super emulator uh, for Open Taiku as well. Nice. Much appreciated. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. We also have ten dollars from Killer Chair, saying, "I've noticed there's a fair amount of elevators in this game. Let's hope the run has more ups than downs. Oh. Best of luck on all of the levels. This run takes you to new heights, my friend, and I hope Ouch. this donation will leave everyone floored." Out. <laughs> 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 that's a great comment there, Killer Chair. And that's also going towards the Open Taiku oh. bonus chart super <laughs> emulator. Couldn't have put it better myself. I think I might have enjoyed that donation a little bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> no such thing. <laughs> Can anybody chop that? I mean, seriously. Challenges. No, 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 not that we don't want any more donations, but come on, give it a try. Try and be better. More puns, please. More bad puns. More chair puns. More elevator puns. More elevator music. More! Space puns could also work. I mean, I'm just trying to pad because we're just crawling down this <laughs> very long shaft. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. This is very thrilling gameplay. Absolutely. Me. I mean, this is what we're here for at like, you know, one in the morning. Right? Oh, yeah, the 108. <laughs> All right, um, you don't necessarily have to kill this guy, but he has been a menace in all of my runs, so I just like to get, uh, you know, rid of him. Um, aggressively, profusely. Uh, because he can't just go ahead and pop out on any of these other ventilation shafts and just mess up the run. Completely. So I, just, I will take those, the few seconds that I lose by uh, taking him out. It's a lies. He's a lies. What? I, I, I tried to go for some kind of a life joke here, but it kind of just fizzled out. It, it's going to bet on my head. Um, coming up, we have the first of the larvae. Because, you know, obviously, this outbreak uh, happened for a reason. Or I always forget about this guy. This guy comes first, then comes the larvae. <laughs> and those guys are really annoying, too. And they come out of nowhere. You can kind of, you know, whenever you see these uh, bigger blood sacks, you know that one of these is going to jump at you. But there is just some of them I can just never remember, even though I've played this game a <laughs> lot. A real lot. Huh. Basically, well, what the game actually did to me, it kind of Stockholm Syndrome me into running it in a way. Because, you know, I'm kind of one of the guys who always goes for all the trophies and achievements and whatnot in his games. And with, oh my lord, you were not supposed to attack me yet, buddy. You were supposed to attack me when I go down the stairs. Look at my health. This is not amazing. excited to show up for ESA Winter. <laughs> Could not contain. Nope. He was not contained in any way, shape, or form. Um, but if you want to go for all the achievements in this game, actually, you have to play through it like a total of six times or so, because whatever you will see that they released, you have to play through it again. And of course, I did that. And after I did all of those runs, I was like, you know what? I've played this game so much already. I might as well just go ahead and start learning the glitchless speedrun category because I would want to try and start going through it even faster than I am already am. Just to save down a little bit of time. And that is basically how I got into speedrunning this. Might be a little bit of a real story, but some of you might actually, you know, have a same story about some of the games that you got into speedrunning or just, yeah, you did. Um, we're actually gonna try and sneak past another security bot in just a moment here. And uh, he has a habit of just killing me, even though I do go the correct path. So we will see. Because again, the security bots, if they see you, they kill you in one hit. And he's over there. He's locked onto me. I grab the health. Very good. And then you just make a little bit of movement. So uh, if you walk er behind these boxes, he will lose sight of you. And has to follow you around the corner, and we made it. Nice. I made it to the trap. No doubt. Contact me when you get to the checkpoint. Coming up, though, is probably um, the point in the run where I have the most deaths. <laughs> like I normally always die here in the runs where I actually come here at a good time. So uh, let's see how this goes, because Elias will tell us 
There's a trap in there to keep inmates from sneaking. There's out. a trap in here. What, say what? Like, it, like the prison architects actually expected people to try and escape through I mean, these yeah, tunnels. Yeah, but it, people <sighs> try to escape prison. I mean, yes, but you know, having the foresight. Okay, they might go through this way. We're gonna install traps. here. I mean, I, I, I get the idea, but it's still a bit weird to me, especially if it's like, you know, these two meat grinders at the end of it. Again, I don't menacingly think it's very going certified. towards you. Like, I don't think I've ever seen this in a prison. But anyway, I, I tend to die here, so let's try and not do that. But this guy can die. So thank you. And there's one more dude, and uh, hey. okay, okay. we're just gonna take this a little bit slower so I don't get mulched, and then we're just idea. gonna drop. Because the problem, oh please, Jacob. Um, the problem with this is depending on what the enemies do, you know, if they, because you obviously you're trying to get into these little alcoves that are uh, along the corridor to you know um, hide or get out of from uh, where those two grinders are coming along. But of course, since the enemies uh, come at you nice. while you are not in the little alcove, they can try and grab you. And if they grab you, uh, the animation takes so long that they will uh, basically kill. Well, no, they won't kill you, but they will hold on to you so long that the mean grinder will come back and kill you instantly just then. And you lose about a minute every time that happens. And then the prison architect gets his bonus because he's part of this game prison. <laughs> I mean, prison design. Is, is, is there just somebody coming along every now and again just counting the meat chunks and then the architect gets paid for it? I mean, I assume they have a janitor cleaning it up too. <laughs> right? Otherwise, it, it would get uh, nasty <laughs> in there. I mean, yes. But I mean, isn't the, there the like... The grinder's got to get oil, you know. Yeah, but is it like a more efficient method than <laughs> that? But that having the meat grinder go around this corridor? Like, it's the future, man. Get with the time. Can't argue with results. <sighs> but I escaped. Anyway. You said it was where you died at the moment, so <laughs> clearly it's effective. I mean, the woman does have the point there. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, anyway. With that, we are out of the uh, technically third chapter of the game, Aftermath. We are now in Habitat. And um, basically, the story so far is that... Um, we tried to rescue a third prisoner from the shoe, the uh, what's called special housing unit. Yes. Which is like uh, some kind of high security part um, of the prison, because um, you know we need, you know, we have Elias who knows the prison. We have Jacob who can fly any ship to get them out of it, but they need somebody with a ship. And uh, as it so happened, one of the rebel leaders that. Uh, is the reason why Jack the crash landed back on Kalisto and got to prison still has a ship in orbit So you know they decided to free her. She wasn't very okay with that So she trapped Jacob in her cell and then uh, you know the security kicked in and he got transported to another part of the prison Where Elias wasn't so Elias is now taking the tram station nice and cozy uh, to the habitat of uh, the prison whereas Jacob now has to go through a little bit of uh, well, shit. Yeah, we're now in the waste processing unit, and uh, for everyone watching, we would love to hear your best fun fact about uh, waste. Yeah, open the floodgates. Tell us some real sh facts about shit. As well. yeah. Real shitty facts. Yeah, just like you know, you kinder uh, were suspected to earl <laughs> earlier tonight. I mean, that is basically where Mitako and Trollbeer went, you know, to get that green It does kind of look very similar to the slime from uh, from mm -hmm. the, the Yeah, the, 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 This is where ESA got it from. The Trollbeer just went down and just filled the bowl and then went back up. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's looking really chunky on Jacob there as well. It does. If it really you, does. If you have a bit of a look there. I mean, he's just having a jolly good time, you know, uh, waiting around and that stuff. I mean, um, shout outs to whoever, you know, animated that stuff. Good job. Anyway, uh, we are going to be introduced in a way. Also, before you do that, just just look at this. I mean, you could totally just crouch here. There is no reason to lay down in all of it and crawl through it, right? Like there is enough space that you can just crouch and walk, right? Yeah, you can you can crab right? walk through here totally. I mean, I would probably do that because I'm not gonna crawl through that. I don't think that guy's having a good time though. Doesn't look like it. What the hell was that? 
Uh, that was a new enemy type, actually, that we'll be uh, introduced to a little bit more thoroughly in just a moment here. However, what we can do is uh, we can just reload the checkpoint because it saves the animation of getting out of that tube there, and it also gets rid of, um, you know, the stuff. It's not a donation, but I do see it in chat. Someone, uh, username Niels, actually, sharing that there's a certain amount of gold and other precious materials or metals in sewage. But extracting it costs more than you can sell it for. That's something I didn't know. That's hmm. very interesting. So th theoretically, if it didn't cost so much money, you could make money off your poop. But it does cost so much money, so yeah. Sounds like a shitty method. <laughs> anyway, we are in another room where we need two fuses, as it happens, to open a door. And again, as it so happens, we have two on hand. And since that enemy was still close by here... I couldn't interact with that thing just yet, but I will just go ahead and grab that other fuse that was uh, in here so we could actually do the puzzle the normal way. It's just very nice of the game to provide us with all of these uh, spare fuses because you know, we already have some. And again, um, you will see these fuses uh, basically all throughout the game. I will literally take one, one of the fuses, not both of them, only one of them until the very last chapter of the game, and that will save minutes over the course of the run. It is that impactful. Also, Jacob, please go down the ladder. Thank you. Um, in the meantime, do we have some facts for our audience while they, you know, look it up can, and get can, it in with some, some donations for us? Let's see, see what we can find. Right, let's pick up fun on. Oh, it's it's kind of almost the opposite of what Neil said. But uh, one fact here is apparently poop is mostly water. Uh, it says the poop is made out of 75% water, uh, but dead bacteria and digestible food, cholesterol, and other inorganic substances comprise the remaining 25%. You know, I thought the water that I just waded through was just water. So thank you for that fact just now, because now I'm convinced it's actually well, you know what? It's it's poop. Great, loving it. <laughs> what about you guys out there? Hope you're enjoying your time so far. Might be a little bit shitty, but I hope I have nothing to do with it. Um, <laughs> it was me taco. <laughs> all right, okay. <laughs> it's just going to be the catchphrase from now on. All, it's all me taco's fault. Now, nah. uh, we're just going to make our um, way through here. We're going to do another checkpoint reload tip because uh, it skips a little cutscene. That would happen once you turn that valve over there, and I'm just hoping I can. Nope! Oh. I couldn't skip it fast enough, and now the camera is all messed up. Yeah, it push you right into that corner. Uh, it's like um, once you hit or turn that valve, a little cutscene will start where more of these larvae come in. And uh, if you reload the checkpoint, uh, they are kind of start or get spawned in anew. Otherwise, if you let the cutscene play, they're like immediately upon you. But if you skip the cutscene, they have to be spawned in again. It gives you a little bit of a window to try and get out of the room before they try and, you know, attack you. Um, however, I think it might have to do with loading times because on PC you can get out of this room fast enough before they actually can grab you. Uh, I guess the console versions just don't uh, open the door fast enough because they have to load in the environment behind the door. I just um, want to let you know that uh, Mitako is in chat and he said, you, you know I'm sat behind you. <laughs> he's not. He's lying. <laughs> Don't frighten me doing my horror speed run. <laughs> How dare you? Uh, yeah, no, we're just waking our way through this room, you know, grabbing, throwing enemies as it just so happens. And this is actually one of the doors where you cannot get the fuse out again. So you actually have to leave one of the two fuses that we have <laughs> <laughs> in uh, that drawer right there. Hey there. And... Um, <laughs> Do you feel safe? Absolutely. I have my, bla I have my safety blanket safety with me. Safety blanket. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing can happen. I am safe. I feel protected. I feel warm and uh, fuzzy inside and all these other positive thoughts. I mean, imagine. I mean, it's hard to not have positive thoughts when we have raised sixteen thousand dollars. Exactly. Make -A -Wish. Exactly. And we're going to do even more than that, right? I sure right? hope so. Yes, we will. We should look for that guard. No, we should not look for that. Um, I mean, technically, we have to look for that guard. 
because uh, we need another ID here. Because obviously we want to get out of the sewer facilities here and meet up with Elias in the habitat. However, uh, we are intercepted by this very, um, well, gentleman here. He's going to sprout some tentacles and transform into an even worse enemy. And, uh, you know, we're not having any of that. So, so he just is just going into uh, timeout. No, no. Go into your corner. Oh, no, no. Okay. I think I forgot to read all the checkpoints somewhere because I was not having enough energy on my grip. So we're just going to do this again because, uh, you know, unruly gentlemen like that, we just sprout tentacles and transform. That's just rude. Especially if they attack you afterwards. So uh, we will just go ahead and put them into timeout. Come nope. on, into the corner you go. Into the corner. Into the corner. Go up there. Oh, oh my god. He, he, go he does not want to go into timeout. It is Playtime is over, buddy. It's after, mi after midnight. It's you now. Just want to Come on. Wow. Okay. We were going to keep doing this until it happens. Because normally I get this first try. I don't know what's going on here. But then again, I normally don't run the game that late. Maybe they got like a power up after midnight. Wait, is he a gremlin? Oh, maybe that is why they transform and multiply like that. Okay. There we go. Hey. That is what's supposed to happen. Um, so yeah, the game is kind of programmed in a very funny way. <laughs> because obviously, you know, you're not supposed to just grab these enemies and put them onto other objects in the environment. And for some reason, if you put an enemy like on top of a barrel or something like that, it deactivates the AI and they just die. Which uh, is great for a speedrun. Uh, excuse me? Oh, did you run out of breath? I might have. So I'm just gonna shoot him. I think I should have enough bullets for that. No, I totally have more grip. Why, why did you drop that? Go. Jacob's having an off day. Uh, uh, technical reload here, so we can just grab the infiltrator and throw him into the water. Bye. I love the way they ragdoll, like, they just completely freeze and then fall. I'm just gonna grab this for a little bit later. Oh, where are you going, buddy? You're going in the water. Have fun out there. And then the third one, Warning. since we don't have enough grip energy Warning. anymore. Warning. Uh, where is it? I can hear it. Yeah, it's on its way. It sounds like it's coming from there. Oh, there it is. Okay, come here. Ah, that was a little bit close. It's fine. <laughs> and normally he comes from over here and not from over there. So I don't know what was wrong with that. Don't worry about it. It's just marathon luck. Mm, apparently. Like the anti-marathon luck. Maybe because I'm... um. I have incurred the wrath <laughs> of the taco. You have. You really have. <laughs> I really shouldn't do that when I'm still a part of the milestone madness. Yeah, I? he's going to have a, a, a <sighs> saucy forfeit for you when uh -huh, you're, uh, uh -huh, you're eliminated. Uh -huh. I mean, I would rather it be saucy than chunky like it was <laughs> for you, I suppose. <laughs> anyway. Oh, no, wait. We, didn't, we still didn't make it out yet. But uh, ladder. Host. You know, do you have something for us? Because we're just going down this ladder for a little bit. Okay, well, so if we're going down a ladder, let's just talk about some of the rewards that we have coming up. Quit. So a target at the moment is, obviously we mentioned before, a lot of people put in towards the bonus chart super emulator for Open Taker. That's currently standing at $482. Um, so just got over a thousand to go. So can we hit that? I'm sure we can. And of course, don't forget as well that anytime you donate, if you donate $40, you can get some good shirts. You can get the ESA Winter shirt, or you can get the Goosebird shirt, which, as we know, oh, looks amazing. So get your donations in, folks, and we can be able to get some more money raised for the Make-A-Wish Foundation, who, as we all know, do a lot of hard work in granting wishes to children dying of, uh, with critical illnesses, um, and they'll help those kids have a, a fantastic day, including... if. For one particular child, female police officer, dream, <laughs> wish came true for them. So let's get some donations in and get that going. Yes, absolutely. Do get your donations in for this cause. We're all very happy to be here. 
and to be able to, you know to support make a wish foundation absolutely fantastic yeah we're helping uh, helping kids have a better day than Jacob Cubs currently having yes he's not having a good day no 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 this water slide you know some people like going down water slides I don't think he's very much enjoying it's really right reinforcing now. like we, we talked about you know the fun house design and I feel like <laughs> is, is this a, a fun house we have the slide here I mean I guess some people can enjoy their time in prison if they are so obliged, but uh, yeah, nah, 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 this, nah, nah, this kind of fun house. There are fun houses and there are fun houses, and this is one of the fun houses. Yeah, it must have been a fun house designer before working on this prison. <laughs> maybe that's why the trap is in there. Yeah, I think so. I mean, maybe that, maybe that's, that's why it. we have those spinny things in mm, there. Mm. The lacking OSHA certification. Mm, mm. So yeah, um, this water slide section is actually pretty scary if you do this uh, the first time because you can get insta-killed if you hit any of these pillars on the way down. You actually saw me get hit by them uh, once. However, if you only hit like the sides of it and not like the dead middle, you will not instantly get killed. You will just lose a lot of health, as you can see, because I'm in the red again, which is not exactly great. But uh, I guess we can make it work here. Um, in the meantime, we also finally got a shower, so, you know, all the goo is hopefully coming off him. I mean, he, you know, looks a bit more like Metako when it comes to the hair department. So it was easier for him to wash it out again, uh, because you spend a good amount of time yes. uh, in the shower. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not easy to get that stuff out of uh, hair, uh, I'll tell you that much. And, uh, you know, we all saw the other contestants in the Milestone Madness. They all have wonderfully luscious hair, so... Uh, I'm sure we can hear more stories about that every day from now on. Um, this is like another fight section here, which is actually pretty interesting because, you know, we saw the tentacles coming out of the previous enemies. And this is actually a weak spot for them. So what we're trying to do here is we're just grabbing them. Um, and that makes it so that the tentacles will just immediately sprout from their chest. And then we shoot that and that instantly kills the enemy. And that is how you make that fight go over it's pretty quickly. And uh, another fun fact is immediately after that fighting section, um, you get a checkpoint. And if you reload that checkpoint, it will actually put you into the next room. So uh, there's like a, the double whammy that we talked about earlier by doing these uh, checkpoint reloads of getting you know another grip refill while also advancing you a little bit further into the game or you know, into the next room and uh, you know, saving even more time. Hey Taco, I'm how are you doing tonight? Hi friends. <laughs> okay, I got eyes in the tram station. I'll meet you there. Do you feel threatened by the presence? Nah. Why would I, why would I feel threatened? Uh, well, we're, we're really good I friends. Feel, I always really feel like fuzzy good. inside when, when the Taco whisks me. Especially when he gives me, uh, you know, or sends me friend requests on Discord <laughs> that you don't accept. <laughs> what could go wrong? Absolutely. And this is another of the security bots that oh. can insta-kill oh. me in one shot. So hopefully he doesn't do that because I need to kill this one. Uh, please die. Network there we go. Lost. Um, the thing why we, uh, uh, the reason why we kill this one is we want this decoder. Um, decoders sell for a lot of money. And at the next reforge that we visit, we want to get another uh, energy upgrade for the grip. So we can, you know, grip more enemies or enemies for longer. Because as you can see, you know, I can grip maybe two or three enemies and then my energy basically runs dry so we had a little bit of a money route up until this point so I, no, I'm still, uh -huh. <laughs> I had to sell all of my stuff off which means I didn't get really a lot of credit uh, drops up until this point so um, I'm a little hard pressed on everything right now not that it's worrisome in any way but I just uh, picked up just enough um, items along the way to you know, be able to buy that upgrade, which obviously is the most important thing. Um, this is also the last upgrade that we will buy over the course of the game. Uh, even though there are obviously you know, a lot more upgrades that you could get, like uh, damage upgrades or whatever for your weapons, um, it turns out they're actually not that great in a speedrun setting because once again, we are trying to run away from basically every fight that we can. If we have to take a fight, we want to use the grip to get rid of the enemies very quickly by throwing them into pits or against spike walls or what have you. And uh, obviously there will be boss fights later on in the game, 
but every time you do get an upgrade from the reforge, you have to go through this forging animation. You know, you saw the 3D printer yeah, basically this is print your upgrade. Printer. And it takes a good 20 seconds or so for that upgrade to be printed and then for Jacob to grab it and install it into whatever is being upgraded. And that time investment, because uh, it takes a couple upgrades until you actually get to the damage increases for your weapons. And it's just not worth it in the long run. It takes too long for the upgrades to take effect. You have to pick up more money items along the way to be able to afford uh, those upgrades in the first place. And it just... Uh, you just come out in the negative time-wise if you try to go for that. So we're actually not going to upgrade anything anymore from here on out. You can see him until you throw him into the nothing. Yeah, thankfully, these spawns are kind of set. However, I am known to be very bad at throwing these guys off. <laughs> yeah, don't so, think you got that one. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter too much as long as uh, you know they're not in the way. So I guess oh, he just left on his own accord. He just, you know, he saw I was trying to do that. And, oh, he's uh, like, oh, this is for like, charity? Okay. <laughs> you can pass. I, I, I'm out of here. I, <laughs> I have no money on me. Can't believe it. The guy just doesn't want to help the children. I mean, he did. He let you pass. I mean, yeah, but hmm. weird. Taco, do we have anything? <laughs> well, would have put me on the spot. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, so literally just off the t thing of a jig, uh, we did, we've put some things on that. Nope, they're all they're all gone. <laughs> that's great. Um, did yeah, the open Tyco. That's a bit, that's been met. That's been met. You refresh something. Yeah, it's like lots of you know. Do you like dance games? Do you like Mai Mai? There's gonna be a, a Mai Mai showcase. If you know, remember our friend Jasper. That's gonna have a thing that's not definitely live yet. Um, uh. Geez, Goosebert something money. Um, did you do prizes? PS5? Yeah, prizes. What? 50 bucks for a PS5? That's a steal. Um, 50, like less than that. It's like 25 for like a, uh, it's, it's a Nintendo Switch. We love Nintendo. Um, and you can get like a, a, a 3060 graphics card of some sort for maybe $20 or so. Um, Donate so and find out. That's it. You know, do you like alerts? Donate lots of money. I hear they get cooler the higher they go. I, I do quite like the $50 alert. That's a good one. It's not as bad as it looks. Come up. Who's gonna make oh, Who's gonna make us hear the $50 alert first? This rock? Yeah, that's a good thing. Maybe you? Or you? Maybe you? Mm -hmm. Anyway, we find the liars again. Like we finally get like reunited shit. with our body here, so we can finally go ahead and escape the prison, right? Of course. It's finally gonna happen. Yes, this is almost the end of the game, right? Surely, we will go wildly on the escape, live happily ever after, uh, things are going to be great. Nice. We we're looking it. forward to getting out of Come this. Uh... Give us your hand. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, well, um, didn't quite go as planned, I suppose. So what happened in um, the cutscene here is basically, you know, we got reunited with Elias, yes. But uh, another person that we actually never see in the speedrun, you know, because we stop, uh, we um, skip the whole intro section, is um, is Sergeant? No. What's his Elias. title again? He's, 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 called, he's called Ferris. He has some kind of military yeah, I remember title. Ferris. I don't remember he's he's like Lieutenant Corporal or whatever the hell. Uh, he's like one of the head prison guards, and you thought he was done for uh, in the beginning or at the end of the second chapter of the game, the first one that we played. However, he, he miraculously survived, and we were with Elias in like an airlock to get you know out of the prison into the uh, outer section or under the uh, under the surface of Callisto. And uh, it's not a very hospital planet or moon rather to begin with, and uh, we were just in time to put on our suits, so we actually have upgraded health in inventory space now. Um, however, while we or we were forcefully vacated out of the airlock by Ferris, which made uh, Jacob's suit malfunction. For a little while, he was able to repair it really quickly. However, we haven't found Elias yet. So basically, at the moment, we're trying to get through the storm to go ahead and find Elias and hopefully reunite and then finally get off this because the hangar is just over there. You can kind of see this menacing uh, structure in the distance. I shouldn't have looked over that. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> I kind of lost my way there for a second. I was like, ah, oh, I should not have looked over there. But I was okay, fine. Is totally fine. Made it work. He's gotta go find him. Woo! Yeah, he had fun. Did a little bit of a flip there. Suit power's fading. 
Help me. It's okay, Elias isn't doing too hot. Literally. Because it's pretty cold out here. Beacon. This is time for Taco bedtime. Everyone say goodnight to Taco. Good night, Taco. Have a good rest. The beacon. See you tomorrow. Hold on, buddy. I'm coming. Elias. Let me know if I need to send you more money <laughs> to win the milestones. <laughs> well, I see how it is. <laughs> That's what I did wrong. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe you donated the wrong amount. <laughs> you know, be, be smarter, people. Donate the right amount. It doesn't matter what the amount is. Just donate any amount. Any amount that you can donate is the right amount. Even if it's just one dollar or the lowest that Tiltify will allow you to. If it's a hundred, if it's a thousand, if it's one hundred thousand, if you're very rich, just go ahead and do it. We appreciate any amount. Because you get cool prizes. You just heard it from Taco. Fifty dollars and you're in the running for PS Station 5. And you can go ahead and play cool games like the Callista Protocol. It's a cool game. Thank you. It is a cool game. Um, Cutscene. Elias died because uh, his helmet was broken. And uh, again, as you can see, the temperatures are not really in favor of, uh, of people around here. Is the reason you needed a suit to go outside to begin with? Yep. <coughs> Going outside without is a bad idea. But also another thing that happened is that Danny um, came back. Uh, you know, she was the one that made our ship crash on Callisto. She was also the prisoner that we tried to free in the shoe. Uh, yeah, but, you know, again, she struck out on her own because she didn't like us very much for, well, not really obvious reasons just now, but we'll get to that eventually. Yeah, at this point in the story, I have no <coughs> idea why she dislikes you so much. Mm. I mean, she was looking for something on your ship, but uh, it isn't clear what that was. Although we're just throwing these people away because uh, otherwise they would bother us while we're trying to go through the snow here. Again, you've already seen it a couple of times through the run, how much time that can lose you when enemies go ahead and attack you from behind or just, you know, do the old turn around and please hug me stance <laughs> uh, over there. So you can just, you know, quickly grab them, throw them somewhere, preferably far away from you so they can't go ahead and do that to you anymore. And then we are going to make our way over this very rickety-looking bridge. Again, OSHA certified? <laughs> I, I question. I mean, in their defense, I think this is more like uh, abandoned property that is not necessarily part of the prison. Um, the bridge is barely holding up. But then it's been here be a while. Secured, nice and right? Easy. And not accessible. <sighs> or? I mean, I don't think this is like really the way that anybody's using anymore if you, you know, have to go by the sidelines already. Then again, I'm not the most familiar with uh, OSHA guidelines or requirements, so, you know, maybe i That is I'm a good yeah. standard to have. Yeah. So yeah, bridge is kind of collapsing. Luckily, we survived. And then we are going to be on our merry way to the stupidest enemy in the game, in my opinion. Because we've seen the infiltrators so far. There are these four-legged uh, enemies that can turn invisible. However, this guy. Kind of announces the presence a little bit too much. So, ah, <laughs> oh, come on, dude. There we go. You're making me look defense. bad here. You normally, you can't just, you know, grab him midair and just immediately throw him uh, over the railing. And that's the end of it. But I'm bad at throwing, so I guess that didn't happen. <coughs> it's okay. That's exactly what you intended to do, right? Absolutely. Again, suffering from success. I'm only <laughs> so good at the game. Hey. World just record holder, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's a comfy run. I want to be comfy well, for once, okay? So All right. Um, this is like a forced fighting section. We have to kill four of these infiltrators before we can progress. And Jacob just didn't want to grab that thing. It's a little bit... Well, it's not necessarily random where they spawn. Have you found anything yet? Come on, hurry! Before those things come back! Should have hit the trigger. I don't hear any. Mm. Oh, no, of course not. Again. There you go. So you. Uh, oh, this is bad. And that one taken care of, and there was one more in this direction. Okay. Oh no! We tried to help, but he died. 
Let me go in here and just reload the checkpoint. Yeah. <laughs> um, reload the checkpoint because we are now inside this cabin and this enemy that I just threw away has been despawned. Uh, despawned, sorry. And yes, I do want to pick up that ammo because I actually ran out of ammunition during that fight. The yeah, ammo is uh, good to have in a horror game. Yeah. Usually you don't get enough of it. No. Let me take that guy. Oh. I don't know where this sometimes happens, but I've only seen it on the PlayStation 5 version where you just, you know, grabbing an enemy and just looking to the side, trying to throw him away immediately. But for some reason, Jacob drops him and then just, uh, you know, uses the baton to punch him away like that. And I actually have not figured out whether it happens. It keeps happening to me. I'm not sure why. But then again, I'm also, the, I think, the only person who actively runs this on PlayStation 5. So I'm just going to go ahead and play it on that. <laughs> <clears throat> um, yeah. Again, Elias is dead. We are still trying to make our way over to the hangar where possibly there will be a ship for us to fly off of Callisto so we can finally get out of here. No, wait, I was going right. No, it was this way. <laughs> I, get all, I always get turned around on these tunnels. Because normally you're supposed to follow the orange light, but for this particular instance, you're just supposed to follow the white light. Yeah, and it's it too always, easy on you. It, yeah, it, yeah, always. Yep. Always that? does. I just don't learn. But Adina, if you have anything for us, while we are just making our way through the tunnels here. I do. Uh, we've got a, another $10 donation from Killer Chair. <laughs> uh oh. Okay. Here we go. With a comment. Mm -hmm. I was thinking. Uh, yeah, brace yourself. I was thinking of some poop jokes for you, but I couldn't be bod bothered to come up with a good one. What a waste of a donation message. <laughs> and remember, kids, you can't spell fart without art. <laughs> good one. <laughs> it's a very good one. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. There was another word for bothered in there, but I didn't read that one out. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that goes towards the target. Um, open taker, bonus chart, super nice. emulator. A lot of, the, a lot of uh, donations going towards that at the moment. So building our way up towards meeting that 1,500 target on that one. So keep them coming. Keep donating, everybody. We want to hit that goal. Maybe at the other one? That'd be sweet. There's another one of these. Yeah. Trying to be sneaky. I mean, in the meantime, Telly, do we have another fact for our dear viewers? Uh, oh, you want more? Okay. Yes. Shitty facts. Let's see. What else can we got? Um, uh, apparently, the average bowel movement takes about 12 seconds. And apparently, that's something people have studied. Uh, I don't know if I want to consider the pro process of uh, how they figured that out, what, they, what how they measured. But, yeah, apparently, uh, there's a... Researchers from the Georgia Institute of Technology and University of Alabama at Birmingham. That's a very long title. Uh, but they studied a variety of mammals, from cats to elephants, and concluded that the average time it takes to poop is about 12 seconds. I would say those researchers know their shit. I would hope so. <laughs> Thank you. We will be I don't here know if that all an applause, night. But <laughs> <laughs> totally did. <laughs> It's late, you know, we're cozy, we're comfy. Gonna have a bit of fun here. Even if it is a horror game. You gotta have fun and horror. You know, you have to balance it a little. You know, it's, it's a very scary game. So we have to, have to yeah, have it's a very bit of uh, game. fun here. Uh, speaking of having a little bit of fun, we are gonna run to Danny in just a second again. Once this door cycles open. And uh, she's having a good time. A blast of a time, if you will. Yay, uh, it. We're gonna get that one. The next one should spawn from over here. You can hear him already. There he is. You go on the wall because you've been a bad boy. Is there spikes in Okay, no, it doesn't look like it to kill you if it gets yes. the plus. No, no. These actually don't insta kill you. It's only if it's like a moving yeah. uh, blade thingy. It's only in the fun house. Exactly. Only the fun house kills you. Okay. This is not fun. So, <laughs> you know, the, 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 these are like safety this regularity. Is like, uh, the acupuncture mats. <laughs> I just, I really question why there are so many of these spike walls uh, around the infrastructure around here everywhere. 
But hey, again, I didn't design the uh, place, a funhouse architect did, and I guess he just left us. Yeah. One more. Very intense fighting. Oh yeah, gun. absolutely. Very intense battle. I mean, you can hear Danny in the background just, oh my God. just having a jolly good time over there. Dude, really. Thank you. A uh, jolly good time over there uh, shooting and stuff. I guess she wasn't as uh, mindful of getting a grip like we did. Oh, what, what did I pick up there? I don't know. Oh, like a blueprint or something? Anyway, we finally met up with Danny again, like face to face. And we now team up with her in a way. Like, she doesn't completely trust us just yet and just tells us, you know, to go ahead and get on with it and open the gate for the snow cat that she has parked here. Um, she does give us a neat little shotgun, though, that we can now use. You know, the weapon she was using just now to fight off um, the enemies, which is actually pretty handy. One of the best weapons in the game, actually. And uh, now we find out that we need to do or activate two security consoles at once in order to open the gate for the snow cat. And, uh, you know, since she doesn't really trust us, obviously she makes us go to the other station. Of course, she of just course. Stays behind and, uh, you know, waits for us to get there. Also, chat some point. Apparently they were able to catch that. You picked up skunk gun schematics. Ah. Yeah, the skunk gun um, is kind of true to his name. It's not very good. <laughs> uh, it's actually the thing in the game. Like, um, we said in the very beginning, it's very melee focused. Not so much on firearms, like, you know, for example, Dead Space is. But there are still some firearms in there of very varying quality. I'll actually go ahead and open the inventory a little bit and actually get rid of this blueprint because I actually do not want it in my inventory. <laughs> um, not bad, huh? Yeah, it, it is. Uh, because personally, I think that all the weapon. Uh, of course. Are you picking it, my back up again? Because I wanted to try and open the door. Um, <laughs> Uh, like all the weapons that are optional, like the skunk gun and the tactical pistol, they're not very good. Like, really, it's, it's like a bit of a trap picking them up because once you have them, you will start picking up ammunition for them and we would rather have more ammunition for the hand cannon and the riot hmm. gun. Makes sense. So you'd rather not ever have them. And with this guy, you just want to grab them and throw him and then... Ah, God. Oh. Hopefully like, activate the, the lift button faster for there you. There's a monster. Do it. Maybe you want to. Uh, yeah, I guess we are. In the... <sighs> like, this man has no sense of urgency. I mean, I got rid of the head, but. Uh... Keeps going. Oh, no. And uh, now there's tentacles. Okay. There we go. And this one is very tricky to do uh, on console because you have a very small time window to throw that guy away and then try and uh, interact with the um, elevator controls there. So it's very tricky to do. It's a very small time frame. It also kind of depends a little bit on where you throw that guy. Like if you get the angle just right, um, this. The, the spinning attack, the range attack, that the monster does kind of gets blocked a little bit by the elevator door, but uh, it's it's a bit finicky. It can definitely go wrong God. very easily. And, uh, you know, as you saw, if you don't get that right, you just kind of have to deal with that guy because, again, even though we got two energy upgrades to the grip, it's still not a lot of energy that will uh, last you through multiple throws there. Yeah, especially since you need to hold him for a while, too, at mm. the start. It's actually interesting because if you pick up items around um, the place, you know, like cans Again, is or this place really explosive or finishes. Like, look at this man. Like, this, this is not safe. Yep. And you can totally just run into this yourself and immediately get killed. Sorry, go on. <laughs> um, yeah, if you, grip up, if you pick up other things with the grip than enemies, uh, the energy will actually deplete way slower. It's just if you hold on to enemies that the energy just drains in the devs instant. knew you would be trying to do this yes they're like this is too easy so that is why you kind of just want to grab them from afar and kind of just you know drag them into these things and instantly kill them like that so you don't have to hold on to them and this is another instance where you know if you reload the checkpoint after this fight has ended the game will already put you into the next room uh, where you can interact with this console 
and you just save the time of having to run up the stairs, open the door, okay, and get through this room right you here. Yeah, you better. That's just a nice of uh, you know a double time lapse because again it is it also serves as a tactical reload because after this fight we would have very little grip energy, so it replenishes our energy and puts us into the next room. So we get like again the double whammy of reloading a checkpoint. Also, this is like one of my favorite rooms, I want to say, in the game, even though it's just an airlock, because the developers put like a big treasure chest kind of thing in the airlock, so you can just go ahead and open it while the airlock cycle's open anyway, and you just have just enough time to grab everything in there before the airlock is open. So you can actually grab one of these big treasure chests and grab some more resources. Now, in this snowfield, you want to keep to the far left here to not activate um, the enemies. Not every, you know, frozen guy around here is an active enemy, but some of them are. Yeah, definitely enough of them. I remember nice. when you made your way through your casual it, was, uh, it seemed like it was just never gonna end. Not what I wanted to do again. Again, you know, Jacob dropped him again and just batted him away with his baton. I just wanted to throw him away, buddy. Why ain't it listening to me? Ah. Please, Jacob, please. Yes, over there, Jacob. Over there. Thank you. No. <laughs> Again, where's the sense of urgency <laughs> with this man? It's like, it really feels like, you know, all these enemies want to be on camera because normally I just flick them away and you barely see them. But, you know, for ESA, they want to be on, not necessarily their best behavior, but they do want their presence known. Yeah, they do want the spotlight. Absolutely do. And then over here, a nice comfy ride with Danny across... Uh, the surface of Callisto in absolute silence because um, she really doesn't like us. Also, fun fact: um, if you follow Danny here and you just do that, you know, normally, Jacob will just walk very slowly. But if you aim your weapon like that, he actually he doesn't gain a speed boost, but he walks faster while you do that. So we're not trying to shoot Danny here or anything. We're just trying to follow her faster into the ship. Yeah, and this is actually the case of where you would have forced yeah. walking, but there's yeah. uh, things you can do to yeah. get out of it. Where are you? This is actually the ship. Uh, or this is Jacob's ship. This is the one that crash landed on Callisto at the start of the game. Again, we didn't see that at all because we skipped the first chapter. And then this ledge, for some reason, is very finicky. Like sometimes, Jacob, Jacob, please. Jacob. Come on. You can do it. Too far. It's scary. You, you can. You can. There, there we, we go. go. And then we can continue. And this is what Dani was after. She was after this box um, because, again, she's part of a terrorist organization, as far as we know. And um, according to her, she was, uh, well, tracking a bioweapon. This way. And she'll actually tell us about that in just a second here. We just hear her out. So what were you expecting to find? UJC bioweapon. Traced it from Europa to here. To my ship? I thought so. It's just, UJC is basically the corporation that, you know, is kind of in charge of things around here. It's the United Jupiter company, something like that. So, yeah, pretty valid reason to, you know, for her initial dislike of uh, Jacob that she thought he was transporting by weapon. Yes. But, you know, she opened the cargo, or rather she tried to open the cargo, Jacob opened it for her, and she didn't find what she was looking for. So, you know, now she is starting to have doubts about the whole thing and if Jacob is actually guilty or not of transporting bioweapons. Maybe even biohazards. Hey. Mm. Why did you do that to Elias? Anyway, we finally made it to the hangar, you know, where the spaceship is. Well, it's not parked there, but we can use the spaceport to basically call it down so we can finally get off this rock. So hey, we're near the end of the game, right? Totally, we're about to escape, but nothing really will ever go wrong. Right. You just use we already had that when it's Elias like died when we got out of exactly. prison, right? We got that out of the way. We, we already got the twist. Now, this time, we're escaping for real. Yes. And nothing's gonna happen to Danny. No. Ship's parked in orbit. Please? I'll activate the remote call. Then. Yes, please do. Let's get out of here. We can take the elevator in the next room up to the landing deck. Oh, yeah. look, it's gonna be Which elevator music again. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Don't you just love it when you have these talking sections and you're just stuck waiting for a door? Just like open the door. Thank you. Yes, please. I'll get the elevator. Look at all these bodies. Yeah, so this is another bit of uh, a waiting everyone. section here because you cannot actually call so down the elevator by yourself. 
Yeah, you can see here, it just doesn't happen. You have to wait for Danny to come around and actually call for the elevator, and then the elevator takes another this minute or so minute. to descend. So it actually gives look you around. ample time to um, have a look around this room and pick up more stuff. But I have absolutely no idea what I would want that because we're at the end of the game. You know, why should I pick up more stuff? Yeah, we don't need any resources. I don't need this. We're about to escape. Everything will be fine and dandy. Exactly. And uh, yeah, while we're waiting for the elevator, you know, do you have anything for us that you want to tell our dear viewers out there? Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about, again, why we're here. So we're raising money for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Uh, go check out it supports uh, children with critical illness. We're currently just at over $16,000, which in two days, I think we can all agree, is an amazing accomplishment. Yep. Shout out to everyone who's donated. Yep, and so keep them coming. Um, at the moment, Almost little there. update on some yeah. rewards and targets that we've we got at the moment. So, obviously, you can always get now. your T-shirts. I'm going to keep plugging those T-shirts because they look that look that good. I think we yeah, can all agree. That good. Get you can just sip it down and show them that you're wearing. One. I do. Yeah, I am wearing one right now. I will even show you. I am wearing one of these T-shirts. If I can undo my zip. There you. There go. we go. You see, you can buy the. He's not just saying they look good. He he was convinced. He bought one himself. Yes, I've got to, I've got to show it off the goods. That's the way it is. There you go. You've got to see it. Um, so you can get yourself there for forty dollars. You can get either the ESA Winter shirt or the Amazing Goosebird shirt, which we will show again before Maybe. the end of the day. I'm pretty sure because it is that good. Um, also for targets as well. A little update. Uh, the Open Taker bonus chart super emulator run um, of its $1,500 target, it is on $492, uh, which has made very swift pro uh, progress in the uh, during this run. So let's keep that going. Let's yes. do it. Let's go ahead and just meet that incentive, shall we? Before the end of the run, because um, apparently things have gone a bit awry. We thought we were escaping. Um, what is we're, happening? We're, we're going down instead of up, which uh, I guess in this case, not so great. Uh, because as it turns out, while Danny was able to call her ship from orbit, uh, the prison warden was having none of it and activated the uh, turrets that they've also placed around the perimeter, you know, to... There's I a mean, lot of traps and stuff in place. Yeah, right? to defend against invaders or whatever it is. And uh, he just shot down our ship and it crashed landed on top of the spaceport hangar. And now the whole structure is basically falling apart. And that is why we you know, basically fell down that thing and just were able to grab onto something and now slid down into a um, ventilation shaft or something and on a way underground. So what happened to the original car? Abandoned, along with the rest of Callisto. Until they built a prison here. And that is where you we find out that um, right. the prison isn't the first structure they tried to build on Callisto. Because what actually happened a couple of decades ago, there were already some, um, well, not, not pilgrims. But it was a colony, right? right? The, those here? This is where you are right now? The old uh, we're, we're on the way there. So this elevator is not the colony okay. just, the just, just, just yet. Uh, it's just the elevators and the maintenance shaft that they use. The but there was like uh, a colony that they funded on Callisto for, you know, um, expansion plans or whatever it is. And obviously, you know, they were all underground because, you know, Callisto is a very uninhabitable moon. As we've seen. It's getting worse. And um, we found out that, yeah, well, we can't escape any more from the space world because it's you know complete completely trashed right now. Although this is a very important uh, checkpoint reload because normally you're not supposed to run during this segment, but for some reason, if you reload this particular checkpoint, you're now able to run, which saves about a minute over the course of the next segment, which is pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, a couple of decades ago, uh, colonists came here, founded a colony, and something's happened to that colony because you know it's not Let's active go. anymore. Uh, that colony is uh, dead and unheard of, but uh, well, they came back and built a prison for some reason. And obviously, you know, the colony is also still there. So, and it is underneath the prison for some um, ominous reason. Yeah. So that's what happened. You know, when we were falling, we were basically falling into and landed uh, inside where the colony was. And, and it's clearly abandoned. Absolutely. So our thought process here is uh, we know that there are escape pods uh, at the top of the tower of the prison. So we are now basically using the colony and all the tunnels and whatnot. Wait, I'm supposed to go this way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to duck through something a little bit later. Um, 
We're trying to go to the colony, which is again underneath the prison, and then go up back into yeah. the prison, which you escape from at the start of the game to hopefully yeah, get one of those right. escape pods and escape through that way. The reason we didn't do that like right in the beginning is because the escape pods are located in the Warden's Tower, which is like the most heavily uh, secured and fortified structure in the whole prison. So obviously it would be a bad idea to try e even get in there if you have other choices, but since we don't, well, what are you kind of ran out of choices by now, yeah. So, last resort. Clearly this time it's gonna work. Which then, again, you know, raises the question, is it a loop or is it <laughs> oh a <my> spiral? <laughs> <laughs> because we're going down. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure I would class this as a loop. The only thing that I loops think there we is your started objective. in the prison. We're going back to the prison. It's at least a loop. Oh, what they? loops? Uh, tune in on Wednesday for Alan Wake 2. Yes. This is not a loop. That's a loop. <laughs> no, it's a spiral. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, again, things happened. We are separated from Danny again because Jacob fell down somewhere again. It's a recurring theme. I think we actually um, uh, counted how many times Jacob meets Danny and then falls down somewhere, somehow. It's about four times over the course of the run. So every time <laughs> you it's meet... It's a very easy way to make sure that your character is split up in a game. Like, yeah. just, oh no, you fell. Yeah, but it's like, literally every time you meet Danny, you fall down somewhere. Could have at least, you know, tried other methods of separation. Oh my god. Why are you in my way? This is a very uh, lag. Okay, this is an obvious point of, well, this never happened before. Yay, marathon luck. <laughs> this is the marathon. Oh my god. They all just want their spot. Not letting up. My lord. Again, I have never been grabbed by these guys. Okay, so we are going to do the safety wheel at the checkpoint because that deactivates the guy that's behind me. Doesn't help with this dude, but, you know, I'll take what I can get. Also, for some reason, whenever this goop is on the floor, Jacob just refuses to run. It's will always just <laughs> very slowly traipse through it. Feet are stuck. He can't run. <laughs> Sounds like an excuse to me. <laughs> anyway, uh, more poop fact. All right, let's see what we got in the other fun ones. Because we're still not done with them. So apparently most people are primed to poop in the morning. If the first thing you do when you wake up is take a morning poop, there's a reason for that. And that has something to do with your internal clock of the colon. Something about hormones and triggering tractions in your gut. So yeah, completely normal. Uh, about 30 minutes after waking up, this process starts and yeah, right. if you feel like you need to poop right after you wake up, that's why. All right, so now you can know if you are a morning pooper or not. Anybody in the audience a morning pooper? <laughs> anyone want to fess up? <laughs> any, 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 anyone going to poop 30 minutes after they wake up? You ever, There's you, just you, guys too ever, much you guys ever time to ask for people? Like, <laughs> it's just poop. Mm. Fair, fair. Like, if you go to the hospital, you know, one of the things that doctors might actually do there is, you know, they analyze their poop because they can easily find out if something is wrong with you. That is true. A so lot samples are very goes, useful. Uh, through your body until it becomes poop. And the invitation still stands for the audience to, to donate yes. with your favorite fact. Let us know your favorite poop fact. Sam is pulling random ones off of Google right now. Open your gates. <laughs> Not only 30 minutes after you wake up, but also right now. <laughs> I have no idea where I'm going with this. I, I don't help. know. I, <laughs> I don't know what to do now. Uh, maybe not don't going run the into wrong walls. way. Yeah, that, that, that would help. That would help. I know I know it's getting late, but that, that doesn't help. Or are you just trying to pad so we had get more marathon time? Maybe. I mean, we still haven't met that one incentive that we're trying to meet, right? That is right? true. That is so, true. Uh, Chat, make it happen so we can go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, we are <laughs> and not. Of course, for charity. You know, we are not ending sleep. this run until we have met that target. Oh, Wait, no one told me that. <laughs> 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 well, 
in for a dollar, in, for, in for a dime, <laughs> in for a dollar, I guess, as the saying goes, or the other way around. Um, this is actually, well, I want to say one of the worst rooms in the run, because it is very large, and there are a lot of enemies in it. And again, I don't have the grip, or the grip energy to deal with all of them. I want to deal with... <laughs> I'm trying to! <laughs> I want to deal with some of them because we have to go through here twice so I don't have to deal with... Oh, oh. hello! Oh, well, you're you're not the guy that I want to well. grab, but uh, uh, it looks to me. Oh, hello. <laughs> Guys, if you want to go to the bathroom, this is not the way. Maybe these are all morning Maybe we should have put up signs. I mean, maybe they're all morning poopers, you know, just cham champling, champling, champling on the way to the bathroom. Might be night poopers because I mean night it's poopers. not it's not morning right now it's night and maybe that's yeah. why they're shambling. Yeah. It's very, you know. I mean I don't know out the, of the normal. I don't know the time zones in Callisto, so you know, it's, it's very hard to tell, especially fair. if you're on the ground. But then again, you know it's also hard to tell for them. Maybe they are shambling because they just woke up. Maybe. I mean, literally, some of them just you know crawl out of the walls. It kind of actually always reminded me a little bit of the clickers in The Last of Us. They do have the, the way have the switchy movement, yeah. Yeah, also the way that they are, you know, attached to the walls, uh, mm. in a way. I'm not saying they're copying that, but feels inspired by it, basically, I think. It's alright to have similar ideas without mm. necessarily having copied yeah, it. exactly. So now we got the key card, uh, because we want to use that drilling platform that we were just on, but it doesn't have any power. So we have to use the generator first, and that is exactly why I wanted to get rid of these people first. But apparently that guy didn't notice. Yeah, he's just vibing. Because the thing with these enemy in particular is they are blind, but obviously, you know, they have good hearing, just like, well... Just like the clickers. Exactly. So that is why I'm also not running at the moment. I'm doing this on purpose, so to not... as not to alert the other enemies, because I need to open this door here with a key card. And Jacob does this very, very slowly. Uh, uh, Chad has identified the problem. It's because someone blocked the loo and they're all angsty holding it in. <sighs> so it's probably because it's abandoned. It might have clogged or something. I don't know. So I would can't go. To I would say that is a pretty shitty situation to be. Uh, in. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Literally. He's, yeah, very, he's angry. very angry. He yeah. is very angry that he's not allowed to go to the bathroom. Honestly, I get it. If I wasn't yeah, allowed to go yeah, to the bathroom, yeah. I'd probably feel the same way. Yeah. A lot of constipation going on here. Speaking of constipation, I had a fact in here about that too. Hang on. Go ahead. I'm curious. I'm getting the inside scoop on this one. So, yeah. Go ahead. Do, do you want to read it? Sure. Hang on. There we go. Oh, wow. So, apparently, fewer than three poops per week means you're constipated. And this comes from the National Institutes of Health. They define that constipation as having fewer than three bowel movements in a week. And if you do find yourself constipated, it may be worthwhile to take a look at your diet. Some of the more common causes of constipation include eating too many high sodium, low fiber, or processed foods. And likewise, some of the best natural remedies for constipation include eating fiber rich foods like fruits, vegetables, or whole grains, and drinking more water. See, you're Stay hydrated, everybody. Yeah, you're getting education now. You're getting yeah. ways to improve your health here on ESA now. Exactly. But if if there's a blocked lure in the prowl here, though, I don't know if uh, any more hydration or fruits or high fiber is going to help these people. Or Definitely not those. I mean, they look very dry to me. Th you know, they're maybe very dried out. Yeah, th maybe that's exactly what the problem is. That they're dehydrated. So. so all your Twitch viewers, uh, you know, hydrated. you know what happens to you if you don't hydrate. You'll look like these people, and I don't think anybody <laughs> wants to look like this guy. And get constipated. Yeah, that's just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> 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 so get your hydrate emotes out, but also do hydrate, like for real. Yes. If you're watching Speaking this stream for any uh, amount of time, you know, Speaking we've, of you've been about one and a half hours into this whole thing. You should have drunk, uh, I don't know how much, but you should have taken some liquid with you. Jacob is just grunting his way up this ladder. And this is where you find the power generator. But of course, will it power on immediately? Of course. Oh. Nah. Of course, we have to hit the breakers first. We need to flip those breakers. I, I, is this system OSHA certified? Is it safe? <laughs> I don't 
think we have to talk about that anymore because nothing here is <laughs> safely constructed in any way. So it's not just a prison it. that where they completely disregard uh, yep. the okay. Yep. They definitely worked with the least amount of resources here. But at least you know it's easy to hit the first breaker. But and gotta start you off. I, I mean, j one. just look at these cables, you know. Yeah. I, I don't think they should glow like that. I mean, maybe they should, but there should be some kind of protection around that cable. Because yeah, if I, I see like an electric insulation. cable uh, that glows like that, I don't want to be for that. Maybe that's just how you know that the power is on. I mean, yeah, it's easy to identify, but uh, still, I don't know, that's a lot of power going through those cables to light them up like that. That is true. But it's also the future, so. Okay, he is immediately angry. So you don't necessarily have to kill these three enemies, but if they just immediately aggro onto you like that, it's very hard to uh, activate the second breaker right here. So sometimes I just go ahead and um, get rid of them, take that little bit of a time loss, but it just you know might save. Marathon safety, which I think we need with the marathon look we've yeah. had so far. Absolutely. Now this is also a little bit of a dodgy room because, yep, <laughs> there we go, as soon as I say it. Speaking of marathon luck. Uh, where am I? The thing is you get very disorientated if they just keep grabbing you and uh, turning you around. Yeah, now they're just a bunch of oh my God. blocking you too. This, this is a bad time. Yep, yep. This is... Oh, God. Go, Jacob, go! I mean, I think he has about the same running speed as Alan Wake. <laughs> <laughs> just about. This is a theme in our games, isn't it? Yeah, at least too. this guy is wearing armor. So, True. you know, it's a good reason for being is a bit on the slow side. Assuming that it's, you know, heavy armor. I, ju I just really like this guy because, you know, Jacob is Powers locked on. in the cutscene here right now. Time. Just looking at that cable, how it powers on the generator. And you could see that Jacob? last enemy just getting ready to just absolutely Power smack up Jacob, Jacob in the face. And he actually does that if you don't quickly enough uh, restart a checkpoint here. So it's actually on you as the player in a speedrun, obviously, because in, in a casual player, you would just kill all these people. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, we just give you a good old smack. Uh, the other way, there we go. Yeah. Yep. That's a problem. If you could turn around while you're not looking at the screen, it makes it even more disorientating. It's, it's, it's the funhouse design. Just follow the LEDs for more fun. Mm-hmm. And I guess this guy still hasn't found the bathroom. I mean, honestly, I don't think we've ever seen a single bathroom in the whole game so far, so I don't blame mm. these people. Yeah, no wonder they're constipated. Hmm. Can I jump in with a donation real quick? Oh, absolutely. Quick? Because we have $100 Woo! from Swerve Peanut with no comment. But again, going towards the bonus chart super emulator and open taiku, which has now hit, and I will just give you a quick update on that one. Five hundred and ninety-two dollars. So it's less than a thousand away now. Mm. So it's getting on, closer people. and closer. So yeah, come on, people. Exactly. Let's get this one hit. So thank you, Peanut. Appreciate you. Yep. All right. So we finally powered on this drilling platform. And we are now officially on our way to the colony. I mean, we're already on our way to the colony, but this will take us to the colony. And uh, there are these conveniently placed loot boxes all around here, which will just load us up with ammo and everything. I hmm, wonder what's going to happen when games give you a lot of resources out of I mean, nowhere. They just want you to have a good time, right? Yeah. And again, we're just absolutely abusing the grip right here, just grabbing all of these guys and immediately just chucking them off the platform. King of the Hill style. Because <laughs> this is my platform. Stay away. Um, so what happens here basically is uh, we get four waves of enemies. And every time we have to, well, quote unquote, fight for enemies. Um, they spawn wherever you are, wherever uh, closest they can be to you on the platform. Uh, so on the basically um, north, east, west, and south side. And uh, we will just yeah, go ahead and uh, grab them and throw them, as you do. I think there was four on that side, right? I think so. I think I counted that right. I didn't count. It just feels right. Yeah. 
definitely does. Let's go to the other side and do the same. <clears throat> oh, look. Where's <laughs> the blood splatter come from? Oh. Yeah, the, 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 inter the interesting thing uh, with this game is you see me pick up these uh, grip battery packs. And, you know, as the name suggests, they refill your grip energy. So they are very, uh, very valuable in a speedrun setting, as you can imagine. Um, you don't manually have to use them. You can if you want to, but whenever your grip runs out, the game will automatically use one of them if you have one in your inventory. That's nice. So uh, it can be a little bit awkward, though, because sometimes you don't want to have the game use one because, you know, you're saving it for uh, another part. But it also uh, works in a way that uh, if your energy runs out, it will first drop the enemy and then refill it. And this is the first boss fight that we are not going to do. <laughs> so these are the two heads. They are the quote-unquote boss enemies in the game. And, you know, you're supposed to use all the ammo that you just got from these boxes, but instead, we're just going to use that guy and uh, <laughs> slowly guide him <laughs> off the platform. And there's... Well, it insta-kills him, so we don't have to do that. And I think all of you that actually played the game knows how painful the fights against these bastards can be, because they have a chunky health bar. It's my favorite thing when you, you play a game casually and you're like, you know what, I'm going to look up the speed run. And then they just completely trivialize the boss fight you struggle with, and you're just like, great. <laughs> also, uh, just a little bit of a spoiler for the speedrun. There are four of these enemy slash boss fights in the game, and we're going to fight none of them the intended way. <laughs> of course. Just, you know, as an aside. So you know, keep watching to find out how we deal with the other ones. <laughs> Which is actually a little bit interesting because uh, one of them, we were just recently debating in the uh, speedrun community for this if we are to allow the quote-unquote quick kill I of it, because it, it, at least in the glitchless category, because it kind of goes God. into glitch territory, but also kind of <laughs> not. Oh my God. It is debatable. Woo, jump scares what? at fucking 2 a.m. <laughs> but somebody was very excited about a possible donation. Oh, God. Yeah, I say someone with a jump scare was King Rhodes TN for his $40 from all the crashes from the Sonic Dream Team run. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Good luck to Ashma on finishing up the Kalisto Protocol run. Thank you. Um, also, King Rhodes. Bathroom. He decided that he would like to get his hands on Goosebert shirts, so he put his $40 Yay. to gain a Good shirt choice. as well. Good choice. Good choice. And of course, we also passed out our congratulations for your run as well. A nice, uh, good time you got earlier today with a new record. Nice. Okay, so this is a uh, the calling that we are trying to make our way to, and as you can see, you know, all the inhabitants or the rest of the inhabitants here. Ah, uh, yep, they've been infected. So they won't help us in any way, shape, or form. So uh, I guess whatever happened with the outbreak at the prison also maybe happened at the colony, huh? Yeah, maybe. Let's see if we can find out. Oh, come on, dude. <laughs> Just a little bit too excited. Oh, two of them. Okay. Uh, where did you even come from? <laughs> this time I was prepared. <laughs> I wasn't. Nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, though. I appreciate that the jump scares for uh, for charity. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and reload the chicken. That's probably is, safer. This, this is uh, this is just not now. Okay, um, quickly covered off the jump scare that absolutely <laughs> terrified me. I jumped out <laughs> of my skin over here. <laughs> so thank you, Static Crowbar, for that jump scare and the twenty-five dollars um, with the comment "poop fact." There hey. are there are only seven main triggers for diarrhea in humans, and by luck. The American fast food chain Taco Bell has foods to trigger all seven of these <laughs> on their menu. <laughs> I've, I've never tried Taco Bell, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> so if you ever feel constipated, now you know where to go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Thank yep. you so much for that donation. If I'm ever in America, I'll know where to go. <laughs> <laughs> if you're ever in America and constipated. You know there is that as well, yes. <laughs> I think maybe we should ask the Americans on the venue if they can confirm or not. That's the point. Anyone here can verify this? 
Immediately, I just hear, I'm a Canadian. Yep. <laughs> So, but yeah, you actually saw it there. Like, if there is an enemy too close to you or too close to the item that you're trying to interact with, it will just say blocked and you can't do anything until you've dealt with a threat, so to speak. Uh, so, I'm just gonna go over to this wall here and uh, spend a bit of time nailing people to walls. You can't just nail people on stream. I, in fact, can do. And I ESA allowed me to at like uh, 2.20 in the morning. Well, there you go. Out on a Sunday. Danny, I'm heading up to the so. Nailed it from <laughs> <the> audience. <laughs> Nailing everything that's not bolted to something else. Sounds kind of wrong if you say it out loud. <clears throat> anyway, continuing on. <laughs> um, we are on the lookout for Danny here because, you know, she took another way since we fell down while we were still together. So she is somewhere on the colony. So we're just on the lookout for her. I'm getting rid of these people. There. Just throwing them around a bit. Why is she responding? And we're actually getting up to another fuse gate. Remember those fuses that we picked up like way back in the prison? Yeah, well, we problem still we're gonna use more fuses. We still have one on us. We were normally supposed to, you know, pick this one up somewhere else uh, up here, but that would trigger a lot of enemies that we have to get through. So instead, we're just gonna do this, and then we're just gonna go through the door, and everything is peachy. Perfect. And I'm still carrying one fuse with me. Keep that in mind. <laughs> it's the same one you just used, right? Yes. Yeah. Again, fuse duplication isn't really what's happening here. We just, yeah. It's a very interesting name uh, for, for the tech. I understand why, but... It, it's just easier than calling it fuse re-grabbing Fuse or manipulation. Or, yeah, I don't know. yeah. It's just fuse duplication. Everybody kind of knows what's going to mm. happen. Anyway, we're finding Danny here. She's currently locked into another person's memories, which is why she won't immediately recognize us. And kind of attacks us here, and we fall down another pit because it tips over the container that we're in. And we fight another boss. And this is actually the one that I was referring to earlier that kind of goes into glitched territory, but we, you know, we allow it for a glitchless run. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to take this guy up to this little slope you can see over there. Oh, I think I see where this is going. So this is a little bit precise, so bear with me here for a moment. Uh, that's a bit finicky. Uh, there we go. Hey. He, just, he just goes up this little slope and he's like, no, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm guessing that's related to what you were claimed before when you put that uh, when you put that guy in timeout. Yes. You put it on top of things that, and the that AI is, just shuts That up. is exactly the point of contention that we were going for in the speedrun community is if we allow that, you know, grabbing that guy and putting him onto that barrel and he dies, why are we not allowing this? Because it's kind of the same thing, you know, you're putting an enemy on geometry in a room that just does something with it. I mean, it's obviously not intended. You are supposed to fight this guy, you know, with your weapons and more enemies spawn in and it's very, it gets very frantic and whatnot. Um, and it kind of takes that out of it, but oh no, it, it's, it's hard to say if it's if it's a glitch or not. And yes, we've, we went Danny, so obviously we had to follow that uh. somewhere. Um, so it was a point of contention, but, you know, everybody was like, yeah, okay, you know, we can see uh, where this discussion is going. We do allow that other thing. So why should we not go ahead and allow that? Because it literally allows us to skip every... Well, not necessarily skip, but have a uh, fast kill or alternative kill method, or whatever they want to want to call it, for all of the two heads. So just, you know, for the consistency, I suppose. So, see it in chat, someone has a really good suggestion for a new name for the huh? fuse duplication. It's Refusal. <laughs> no, I don't know. I personally think you should uh, make that the new official name, but I'm not in the speedrun community. That, 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 that's a good one. Okay, who, who, who came up with that? Uh, let's see. That is cake. Cake. Cake underscore. Oh, I mean, it's the cake refusal. <laughs> the cake <laughs> refusal. There you go. <laughs> I'm immediately on board with that. Yeah. I will. Oh, uh, well, once I'm done here at ESA, we'll just go ahead to the student community and um, the throw shop. that into the ring. Because, yes. That uh, is a really again, good name. It's not a fuse duplication. It's a cake no. refusal. It's a we refusal. Of cake. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not necessarily. But, you know, you get the idea. Um, anyway, we made it to this dome like structure that very much looks like a lab. I am Dr. Caitlin Marler. We are being greeted by a doctor. 
And uh, this is basically, you know, where we get um, the background on what happened during the calling. Like, they, well, you know, they were digging through Callisto, like through the surface, uh, looking for, you know, minerals or what have you. But what they actually found was an alien creature. And in the kerfuffle there, the alien was killed. However, it had a lot of larvae in it. Uh, with which they could do research, you know, to advance the human, uh, humankind. Um, and that is why they built the prison on top of it to have a readily available pool of test, uh, test subjects. Sorry. Uh, fighting one of them right here, this is Ferris. And if you want to go ahead and quickly explain what's happening here while I'm trying to do this. Yes, so this is a very fun tech that's going on that you might not even spot if you're not very familiar with the game. But the generally how this fight is supposed to work when you play this casually is that, you know, we're doing the left and right dodge that we explained earlier where you have to dodge and alternate. Uh, and you're supposed to, you know, he's supposed to do his chain of attack and then, you know, you dodge his and then you attack him and he will dodge. Uh, oh, get hit, and then, you know, back and forth. However, if you get your timing right, uh, so not too fast, but also not too slow, you should be able to get him into a stun lock where he can't attack back. Uh, but right now, he's not cooperating. I know there was a discussion of a going theory where we're wondering if the latest patch has potentially even broken this tech, but that's, that's what we're trying to do here. He is, yeah, he's not. I mean, he's taking a couple of hits in succession, but... Because you want to do avoid doing the full combo, because that's you know putting him back to attacking you, and that is slow. Yeah. But you got it. But that's the thing; I haven't gotten it since that patch dropped. So I'm just debating if you know they actually patched out this method or not. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe I'm just off my rhythm. But um, ever since I started practicing for ESA, I've not been able to get it like ever which is making me very question what's going on there, because I was very consistent <laughs> at it and basically got it every the time. Of, you know, hard uh, to say some of these, uh, mm. the joys of running current games that keep, keep getting updated and uh, change things out of nowhere. I mean, it's not like this will save minutes or anything, mm -hmm. but uh, you this will definitely lo more consistent. Yeah, lose like, I don't know, 30 to 40 seconds or something for that fight. Which might not sound much in about two hour speedrun or so, but you know, it it's just time loss. It adds up. Have, so. It adds up. Especially, you know, if you're used to just doing this fight this particular way and you just don't get it anymore and just start questioning, okay, what is happening? Systems are all shot to hell. But yeah, we are back in the prison now. Because there was a handy elevator right from that big alien thing you might have seen, maybe not. Right into the prison. And this is where you found Danny earlier. You know, where we had this uh, fight in the very unsafe uh, <laughs> room that we saw. You mean the fun up. house? The fun house, yeah. Yes. Can we make it totally safe. Looks like it. So much fun. Getting the door now. And now we're just trying to get Binger, just checking my inventory here, and. Uh, and it's boom return. Yeah, we get hit by the security bot and get back all, dragged all the way into the cell where we started the game or the speedrun, basically. Not necessarily the game. Again, the game starts a little bit earlier than that, but the prison section, right back where we started. So it was a loop all along. And it was. Right. And we get the bat cycle. Great. No, we don't. Whew. Right, it is when, when she stops her dialogue. Because for some reason, sometimes when Mahler... Uh, stops talking here. I'm it takes a good 30 ahead. seconds for no. that cell door to open because the game is still loading something in the background. So you can just get hit randomly by a 30 second time loss there. Which is great. I love when things like that happen completely also, out of your control. Also, another fuse door. You're supposed to go th over here, pick up another fuse, but there's another two head that you would have to fight. So I would rather not. No, it's not. Let's just use the refusal glitch. It's not a glitch. This is glitch's category. The, the refusal tech. <laughs> oh, grab it. And that should be good enough. Nah. Oh, close. Oh, probably one more. Can I jump in very, Go ahead. Yes, very quickly? Go ahead. It's just a, a confirmation that we're all definitely going to want to hear. So, we have a $10 donation from Big Al confirming American here can confirm the Taco Bell fact. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for that, Big L, and uh, thank you for the confirmation as well. So we all know when you go to America, you know the place to go if you need some help. Thank, thank you. you very much. Yes. 
And yeah, that uh, refusal technique that we just used there, let us just completely skip that third two head that we were supposed to fight. So yeah, that is three for three in the, well, what I got quick kill so far. Yeah, two two quick kills and one uh, one complete skip. Okay. I always, said was always forget these spoilers. I th said there was four, exactly. Oh, hello. Oh boy, they're turning around. Yeah, that was like the worst timing as well because I was trying to get oh. to this thing right here. Hello. This is not looking. There's a lot oh. of attacks flying in that hallway right now. I'm not sure I can get through here alive. Yeah. Actually. Not looking good. Oh. Need to make it down this staircase. Maybe? Just need to make it down this staircase. Okay. Woo. All right. Close. I think that was the roughest I've ever had. So uh, I will just take a second here. Yeah, and inject cool. some goo into me. <laughs> like give it right into my veins. What? Like he, he's like the real contestant for the milestone madness, isn't he? Did he just it, fill a syringe in the waste plant before or what? Give the poop straight into my veins. Ugh. Yeah, don't don't do that. That's that's not good. No, I don't think that is very sanitary. No. But yeah, again, you can just see the power of the grip in action here. You know, we're just not fighting anything here. We're just grabbing stuff and flinging it somewhere and just be on our merry way. And this is the last fuse door in the game. So normally what you're supposed to do is you just see the door over there. You have no fuse. You're supposed to go through this ventilation shaft over there into this room back there. Grab the fuse, fight a couple of enemies. It takes about two minutes or so. And instead we just do this. Well, thanks to refusal, <laughs> we don't have to do that. And that was the last door that we need a fuse for. So again, we took this fuse from the very first chapter of the game, basically, all the way back here. Because if you remember, we actually grabbed it from over there. And we you know, took it on a merry way all throughout Callisto. <laughs> back here, basically. We just went sightseeing, really. <laughs> Well, I didn't really take this place for a tourist trap. I mean, it has traps. It why not? Why not for true, tourists? True. Prison traps. <laughs> also, this is the fourth forehead. Hey, there he is. So, come on here, little buddy. I don't think it's forehead. I think it's true head. Uh, for, yeah. Although forehead Sorry. sounds funnier. Kind of does, doesn't it? We are just. I mean, you can probably already tell what I'm trying to yeah, do here. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh, oh no, oh no. no. <laughs> Yeah, oh. that didn't go as planned. Let's try that again. The problem was I dodged a little bit too far into that one corridor and that triggered that normal enemy to spawn. And uh, him attacking me from behind uh, just kind of makes this very um, unsafe to do. Let's go then. So let's try not to do that. Okay, come over here. Okay, and then there. So I don't want to go through that corridor yeah, if no, I no. can help. Nah, okay, let's there try that again. Go. Come on, back up. Come on. Back it Come up. On. There do it, do we it, go. Do it, do it oh, pop. no. Oh, no. There it is again. Oh, uh, no. Maybe, maybe. Going, going, going again. Oh, I, I hate when this happens. Like, he wasn't really in in the fan. Oh, oh there that, we that. go. Okay. Whew. That was tense. Because that sometimes can happen is uh, if he doesn't go like deep enough into mm. the uh, wall fan there, he still gets damaged, but not enough to get killed, but enough to um, get reduced, like I think beneath half health. And that is when they basically get rid of one of their halves. You can kind of see them, you know, smash one of their heads and then just rip half of their upper body out. And. As um, we do. The problem with that is I think he's like invulnerable during that, from, uh, during that mm -hmm. section or I, at least I can't do anything during that time because he's not attacking me so I can't push him the into the ventilator and uh, I just have to wait for him to you know start attacking me again so I can push him into the ventilator back there. Obviously you want to do that in one fell swoop right. because it saves you time and um, you also d normally don't have to deal with that any other enemy that started attacking me there. But I guess I just dodged into the wrong um, direction at one point. Anyway, that was uh, all of the two head fights. Yeah, that was all four. Yeah. Even though we only saw three because you skipped one completely. Again, you know, if you played this game casually, you don't, you 
probably maybe struggle with the two fight because they are very chunky. They can uh, take a lot of hits. But uh, now you know how to very quickly deal with them. And we are on our way into the Warden's Tower now, so we are getting very close to the end of the game right here. Do you think this elevator is going to play? I want to wait, wait. <sighs> Don't think so. Not even for the Warden? Mm. I, I, don't, I don't know. He doesn't, you know, strike me as the very uh, humorous type. No, I guess that's fair. I guess that's I fair. I mean, that's why we don't get the cool elevator music. Hmm. So He's a bit of a reward. It's like a very strict, you know, kind of deal. Like, I don't think that dude ever smiled once <laughs> in his life. <laughs> yeah, bad. As far as I can tell. No, no. I guess we can do something a little bit fun here. Yeah. Um, yeah, what is all this? He's gonna pick up this audio log. Get a bit of story. That's basically what happened at the start of the game. Talk. The time has come for action, and I know that I am right. Computer, initiate the Callisto protocol. That's the and name of the game. We have it. <laughs> and time. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the earlier there. We're in, we're in the earlier there. We're in the earlier there. But I, I just wanted to go for that name drop right here. <laughs> what the hell? So if you ever wondered why the game is called the Galista Protocol, well, there you go. <laughs> it's literally the name of the initiative the warden has begun, and, and that caused all these events. Seeing the truth it all makes sense. A diluted test sample released from one of our labs. All right, one more poop fact before right. we get That's to the end of the game. One more for good measure. Oh, here's a good one. Uh, it takes two to five days for food to turn into poop. Sometimes you might notice foods like corn showing up on your stool extremely soon after a meal, but foods that are high in cellulose and therefore difficult for your gut to break down are exceptions and not the rule. Normally it takes 6 to 8 hours for food to be absorbed into the small intestine from the stomach, and then it takes 36 hours for the food to move through the colon according to the Mayo Clinic. The whole process takes somewhere between 2 and 5 days total, depending on the person. Oh, there you go. And I mean, if you're ever curious about how long it takes for you, eat some corn. I mean, that is why we all feel so bad on Mondays, <laughs> I guess, and so good on Fridays, right? <laughs> because it's finally getting out of us. Maybe that's what it is. Also, uh, yeah, this guy is back. And yeah, as you might have surmised, uh, it's basically exactly the same fight uh, as we had just a little bit while ago at the end of the Colony chapter. Yeah, so we're gonna try for the same thing, but uh, again, like he mentioned, it's been very inconsistent after the latest patch, so... But if you hit him at very specific intervals, you should be able to attack him fast enough to, you know, keep him stunned, but too slow to do the combo that will prompt him to attack you back. But yeah, no, it's not very cooperative. So we do the old dance of dodge his attacks and then attack back, then go back into dodging. And yeah, this is definitely what you don't want to see, where he you know knocks you to the ground because it takes even more time because he will attack you afterwards anyway. And that is probably what you see when you play this casually and try to defeat him. Yeah, he's just not playing ball Get here. Get him! He does have a very lovely glow, though. That he does. What was it? A little bit of a glow up. Next generation. <laughs> oh my god. Next generation of humans. Dude. Ah, there we go. Okay. There we go. Alright, final boss time. He is a looker. Uh, so this fight, like. Basically, have has like two repeating phases. Uh, in the first phase, the guy has like a shield that you can see glowing up when I shoot it, and you have to get rid of the shield. The shield breaks, and then you can attack his head, and that is where the actual damage comes in. So, is this still Ferris? Or? This is still Ferris. He's okay. just uh, well, you know, he's kind of a little bit bigger. He's eating all his fiber. He's like ready to go for the big one in the bathroom. <laughs> 
So this is what the next generation of uh, humans supposedly look like, according to the warden and, you know, the uh, ballista protocol. I, you know, if that is what the next generation looks like, I don't want to know what the next generation poop looks like. Oh, God. Didn't even consider that. <laughs> oh. uh, I think that one of the little ones hit me there. Again, um, as we said before, our weapons are a little bit weak because we never upgraded them, but time-wise it would just not be worth it to do so. So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, shoot him a couple times in the face and eventually he will die. There are like explosives and ammunition and whatnot around the room. And there are also these crawling enemies, like these guys, that you can pick up and throw at them that are basically the same as uh, an explosive canister. That's convenient. It kind of is. But he's also, you know, sometimes he's trying to run up to you and hit you, and that is actually an instant kill. Ooh. Or at least it is on higher difficulties. I've actually never gotten hit on minimum security, which we're actually. Don't say that now. Out. With Marathon Lock, that could easily. Uh, yeah, probably Don't jinx it. Actually, and yeah. he's dead. Okay, cool. Okay, so obviously the only thing that is missing is a dramatic escape sequence. Of course, yeah, because we, we have to actually escape. That's been our whole point since yeah. the start. We want to get to the escape pods, right? Yeah. And now we just have to make our way to the escape pods. And time will be once we, well, uh, run over a little uh, blockage on the ground. And it kind of gets over into the cutscene. You can see it in the next room once he does a little, not stumble, but he's uh, stepping over something that's lying on the ground. And that will be time. All right, I'll be ready. ready. You can see it there once he goes oh, over that thing. And time. That's it. That was uh, the Callisto Protocol. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. You know, we got a little comfy run going yeah. in here Not into the night. That was the last run of the day, last run of the first weekend of ESA Winter 2024. Um, we actually are not going to do any more runs today. As you might know, we are actually closing down the stream or closing out the new runs during the night but sections here, which is, you know, right now. It's nearly 3 a.m. for yep. us in the morning. The stream will resume at, I think, 8 o'clock in the morning. There will be reruns during that time, so you can stay on the channel if you want to watch some of the highlights that happened during this day. But the next truly new live run will happen at about 8 a.m. And it will be Cocoon done by Sunny Muffin on stream one right here. I'm not sure which the first run is on stream two. I'm not sure, but we can let Dean. Hey, we're gonna probably do that. Pro, so, so you know, talk about that. still stick around. But uh, yeah, that's been all of us. Yeah. You might know us. Actually, normally we do core runs during <laughs> ESA. This time we, we both that, came yeah. here with our solo run. That so that was me with Kalisto Protocol. Yes. And uh, we will see you, you very running. soon. Yes, I will be here on Wednesday, 6 p.m. local time ish. Keep an eye on the schedule. It might change. It also might be completely different if you're in a different time zone. But yeah, I'll see you then. And I mean, if you know anything. Anything at all about Alan Wake 2. It is that one thing, right? You all know what I'm talking about. You all know what I'm talking about. You want to see that. You want to see that. But yeah, I will right tell now, how you about we go to bed? But yeah, for now, we want to go to bed. So um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for the donations and the poop facts. Yeah. Keep, 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 keep them coming. I think the next runners will definitely appreciate those. And uh, Dino, take us out of here. <laughs>